Black Thriller City. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You might need a theme song for your shit. Check this out. Turn this out loud. Let the shit see Ben. JackThriller.com. We creep in. Snoop Dogg to the left. Jack Thriller to the right. JackThriller.com. Do it all night. Hit the website. Hit us up real quick. If you're trying to get hooked, double the pass. Super bitch. Yo, yo. Go five dollar ass down before I make change. And we back again, man. Now, this is going to be a very monumental episode. Once again, man, let me go ahead and start off by uh, 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 introducing my co-pilots for the day, man. Um, these are my cousins. This is my blood right here, man. Uh, these are the, uh, the, the, uh, the godfathers of the crank movement and whatnot, man. Soldier Boy Dance, Get Silly, Shorty L.O. Man, the list goes on and on and on. Y'all give it up for YBT and Lil Playboy. Cash camp. Let's go. Yes, sir. Hey, man, show them your school clothes. Thank you for having us, Jack. Show them your school clothes, man. Oh, it's man, I got some light on. Day. I got some light on. Show them, show them, turn the light on. Just give me the light. Show them that new nigga shit. It's time to do my dance. Okay, yeah, come on, come on now. Every, to do everybody ain't dance. able. Everybody ain't able. Okay. Come on now. That's what they do. That's what they do. They tear the cater shit. Rick Owens on your feet. Oh, you can't get the geo. Come on, man. See what you doing over here. Everybody, I ain't even know what it is. They go up to the top. They got the zipper on. Come on, now he going crazy. He got his school clothes on. That's what he went to go do. That's what. That's what the fuck he went. Oh, yeah. Hey man, he can't. Yo, he was supposed to be here earlier and shit, but we see he went to go goddamn put on the school clothes. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now this guy right here, we started off doing comedy together. together. Hold on, we go back further than that. Further than that. Where, man, MCI oh, world come. come. Now hold on, it's almost like we finished each other's sentences. Stop <laughs> saying the same thing I'm saying. You stupid. You stupid. No, no, you, you stupid. Ooh yee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Damn. Just like old time. Just like old time. Hey, man. Yeah, man. We go. Oh, he was in my dad's gospel play. Yes, my, I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The will to survive. Yeah, yeah I've got I've it. Got it in Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Us and Tyler Perry came right behind us. And, and it's, days. come on now, come on now. He's he sharing one stage. One stage. Yeah. And if we didn't buy, if we didn't sell the tickets, your daddy wouldn't let us in. I said, man, I'm in the play. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 I can't get in. Well, you ain't got no tickets, man. You can get in. Man. I'm in the play. <laughs> Needless to say, he wouldn't. Have, Excellent. Dr. Hatch is my dog, though. I ain't gonna shit on him. Like it, it, man, go on shit on him, man. He's going to my mama, man. Right, nah. <laughs> nigga gonna leave my mama at 63, goddamn. No, Apparently, man. that nigga wasn't pra- uh, walking in like he was talking to goddamn. No, no, no. He ran out on us, goddamn. Another I told bi- him, if you break up with my mama, we ain't friends no more. <laughs> another, if you break up with my mama, we not friends no more. <laughs> another bitch to survive. I've got it. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> Look inside, okay. Joe Williams, Dr. Hatch. <laughs> Praying hey, for you, my brother. Hey, hey. Hey man, so uh, case, once again, the, you know the list goes on. We worked at MCI Worldcom. We was like the top salesmen up there. This at 18, 19, I was like 18, 19, 17, 18. 19. Okay. Yeah. The, the, you I, had I, was, be, I was 16. Yeah, you was younger. Yeah, I yeah. was 16. Yeah. yeah, yeah, when I was working up there. You know, I was making like $1,500 a week. I that, This nigga making 4500 a week and shit. Oh, I was making so much money. I didn't, I, it was crazy. Yes, yes. Hey, mind you, we didn't know we were scamming niggas at the time. <laughs> yeah. Before Nigerians might buy you, we started the scamming yeah. shit. Yeah, 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 we started that shit, nigga. Nigga, yeah. switch your ass over from 10 cents to 5 cents, nigga. Predecessor. The 90s. What? Y'all yeah, was predecessors. We started this yes. shit. Yes, yes. Mr. Nigga, what, thanks what, I get. What, what, whatever whatever it, it took to get your ass to switch over to MCI, nigga. we were saying that shit. Nigga, nigga, we can switch your ass over here right now. We gonna give you $20 to switch over to us. <laughs> Do you remember your opening thing? Yeah, uh, hello, this is um, for Randy Pride, hey, and um, I work for MCI Worldcom. Oh, okay. You know, I'm, I'm here to, um, you know, help you lower your phone bill and everything. We're not asking you to marry us. Uh, we're just saying, just date us for a couple of months. You know, uh, as a matter of fact, oh, who are you with right now? I'm with AT and T right now. AT and T. Okay. Did you know that AT and T is charging you uh, four dollars and seventy five cents a minute and everything plus overages? I didn't know that. I thought I was paying five cents a minute. And you don't deserve that. You I do deserve five cents a minute. That's what they told you that we was gonna give you. But just check this out. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna give you a uh, 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 negative three cents a minute. 
<laughs> Negative three cents Sign a month. Sign me up. <laughs> okay. Now I'm about to send you over to our uh, uh, third, third party, party verification. Yeah, 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 and party all party. I need you to do is say yes, yes to yes. everything. Yes. Don't say no to nothing or you gonna fuck my I mean or uh, this won't go through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you remember the Amex they used to give us cash yes. at the end hey, of the day? Bro, let me tell you something. I ain't even know yeah. that it was that real shit, money. It was real money. Yeah. I had a whole bunch of that shit under my bed uh -huh. and my dad kept on stealing this shit. <laughs> and then when I found out it was Dr. Money, Hatch. Yeah, I stole my shit, man. <laughs> okay. He knew exactly what it was. Dr. Hatch is going to reoccur in this story here uh, throughout the whole episode. So <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Stay tuned. Well, let me finish introducing you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, after that, uh, 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 we uh, started doing comedy together. Um, he, he was already doing comedy. And I started when I was 17. Mm. How old you were when you, you was? Uh, like right after the MCI situation. Yeah. I met, I met Duval on the bus. He used to ride the bus on that little Duval yeah, yeah 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 and uh I overheard him talking about it but I was already thinking about it and going up there but I think I turned 21 in the club yes it, yeah I, I just I was just so nervous I wanted to go up that night I wanted to go turn 21 on stage but I was just so nervous and I think I seen uh I think uh I think I think I think Chris Tucker came in that night Chris Tucker was in there and you know hold on hold on hold on hold that story let me finish I didn't even tell him who you was okay okay I ain't even tell him who you was, man. Hey, th this guy is a, uh, a, 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 a comedian. He's a, uh, a he's a, a mind. He's one of the biggest uh, video music directors out right now. So I'm talking about Versace, Versace, Versace. Uh, 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 all d damn near all the biggest Migos videos, little baby videos, all, every song. Every fucking song that uh, the City Girls then did and whatnot, that's a hit, he did the video for it. That's hard. He did the video. He, without further ado, y'all give it up for Video God, Gabriel Hart. <laughs> From Memphis, Tennessee, God damn it. North Memphis to be exact. North Memphis to be exact. No, Shout out that, South Memphis, East Memphis, whole Memphis. Hey, did, did, did you know that Memphis was gonna be on top one day like this? Uh, Honestly, I, I I didn't like I didn't like the uh, uh, phonics of Memphis music when I was growing up. I loved the, the music, but I didn't love the the competitive side of it because I always looked at New York and L.A. My favorite artists growing up was like Ice Cube and you know uh, Scarface and, and the sonically that that music sounded way better than than the, the lo-fi shit we had right mm -hmm, in Memphis. Mm -hmm. Not realizing that that was the soul, nigga. We were from Soulville. We mm. didn't have that kind of like identity and self-awareness that they have now. Mm. Cause growing up, we was embarrassed of Memphis because it wasn't West Coast, it wasn't New York. It was like not even Atlanta. It was just, it was super gritty. And that's what I have now. That's that's why I'm still around to this day. Cause I got an element of that in my work. But mm -hmm. at the time growing up, I, I didn't have a, it's like when you grow up and you, uh, you want to eat pizza, but your mama making cornbread and collard greens. And, you know, soul food. But when you grow up, like, well, well, that's really what, that's what I need. That's the stuff I value. So it was like that, you know what I mean? Growing up, I didn't value it, but now mm -hmm. I see now, you know what I'm saying? It's the soul of it, you know? Cause I feel like Atlanta music is a, is a combination of the uh, Miami bass and the Memphis hardcore rap together with the money and economy and upward mobility of Atlanta, the stability they had in Atlanta, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? To me, that's the sound of Atlanta. 100%, yeah. I agree. Yeah. That's just my opinion. I'm not like a the, the 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 gospel of it, you know. But that's just my rationale. Hey, you know, I, I wanted to uh, bring some attention to some man. If it if you uh, if it wasn't for you and and Roland, mm -hmm. um, you, you guys was because I wasn't even really fucking with that YouTube shit. I didn't understand mm -hmm. that. I didn't understand <laughs> that my cousins was on until y'all told were, me that they were huge. Cash camp, these yeah. guys. It was electrifying. He told, yeah, he was well, like, like, nigga, nigga, <laughs> thank you. You see what yeah. the fuck they doing, nigga? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, just the, uh, they still doing it in Memphis now with uh, Duke Deuce, the Crunk Ain't Dead. Yeah, movie. shout out Duke Deuce, yeah. man. You know that boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. That like boy everybody crazy. going in numbers. Yeah, Kanye yeah. West just not got onto it. It's yeah. like the ensemble. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like how Onyx used to be back in the day in New York. Yeah. You know, like a thousand dudes in, in black hoodies. It's something energetic about that. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And y'all were kind of like, like a, a little piece of that. Wow. How many was it in Cash County? Four. It was four, four of us. Four. Yeah, right. It so, was four of us. So four guys, and that's a testament to all black people or black men in general. When you organize, you create a movement. When you by yourself, you just you, good luck. You know what I'm saying? That's true. When you when you organize, mm. some even like even choreography. When black yeah, men yeah. Cor get, get together and unite and be on one page, yeah. 
that's when you make everybody sit and pay attention because it's so rare absolutely for black men to be coordinated and not having like a battle for the top a hierarchy everybody mm. is in sync that's rare so i think that's a testament of why it works you know what i'm saying mm, mm, mm. message <laughs> that's an incredible perspective yeah. i appreciate that that's, yeah. that's really yeah. dope. you guys were genius in that and just working together there were no egos you nah, know what I'm saying? yeah you. and i think that's one of the main reasons why uh well you just said it why it worked mm -hmm. and why we still here today and that's yes. why you know a lot of that stuff we did aren't we were so young too mm. oh yeah so just our age doing that stuff it yeah. made us so rise and got us where we at now so now that we older we already know how to do it how to keep doing it yeah and, and make it lucrative that's what made michael jackson spectacular is that he was young doing it that's why yeah. they made his age a little younger you're more spectacular at nine singing Wee! yeah you know yeah mm, you you're know, genius so, something about that it's something about being young and yeah. organized and like on point like the temptations and when you grown people expect you to be talented right, right. <laughs> you know but when you a kid right. oh my god yeah. like you know how he's seen yeah. he must have been here before yeah 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 you got he knows something we don't know that <laughs> i know no, he was 12. he was yeah he was older than when yeah he was, he was 12. Yeah. yeah they was lying yeah yeah Mm -hmm. So when he got older, did he keep his lying age, or he told the world he was lying the whole you time? You know the fans gonna know the truth. Yeah, the fans. Are, he had pen. You know the beehive was nothing compared to the Michael have. I don't know what yeah. they call it. What they call it back what then? Did they call Michael fans? Michael yeah. fans. Just fans. Just fans, man. They he had true fan like like fanatics. They they they, got, they call it Jackson mania or some, or some shit, shit like, like that. that. Yeah, it was because oh. keep once again he's he's doing it from a kid. Mm, yeah. You know, like so, like I was talking on um, uh, one of the last episodes that you know Michael Jackson was was like a different way five different times in five different generations. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying he voice changed all different times and he adapted to who the way he was growing. You know, what I'm saying, and he he made us accept it and he made it cool. You know, and, and that that just goes to show you of how much of a genius he really was. You know what I'm saying? It, it, like it ain't even, it ain't, it's not even fair how much talent Michael Jackson had. Yeah, yeah. Rest in peace. And Michael Jackson had a lot of um, business smarts with him too. So you, not only did he have the talent, but he had the business down pat. I think that's why he was just so big and he couldn't be stopped. That man went and bought the whole catalog for all the artists that was on his label. Yeah. I heard he bought somebody catalog and gave it to somebody else. Uh, uh, Farrakhan, the Beatles. Or somebody. The Beatles. The, 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 he was he was uh, fixing he, to get the yeah the Beatles ca he catalog. He tried to give it to Farrakhan. Okay. Farrakhan said, "No, brother Jackson. <laughs> no, no, no. Those people are after you. <laughs> Find somebody else to get that shit to." <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> no, my brother. I think I'm gonna die on my own. <laughs> yeah, I will die by myself, oh, by my own. But yeah, he um, my, uh, Michael Jackson. He was just on a whole nother level when he had bought Sony and uh, you know what I'm saying who even thinks to do shit like that. Man, you know, incredible, crazy, incredible business mind. Yeah, he was on. He was on his shit though, man. Um, yo, so Gabe, man, yeah. like we let's well, let's talk hot topics real quick. Okay. Now you, hey, Usher Super Bowl halftime, crazy. Ooh. What y'all think, y'all? I think um, uh, what's her name? Uh, Kiki Palmer. Yeah, Kiki. She pe she better not go. <laughs> uh, she better not go. It, it, she she it look like she back on good with her husband. I think she need to get on there at the end like little mama did and just stand there, <laughs> stand up on the stage like little mama. <laughs> yeah, with, I, with the baby and the daddy just to make it all. I'm gonna say this. I, 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 I honestly like the fact that they got somebody black. I feel like the Super Bowl has been trying to cater to the black audience these mm -hmm. last couple uh, couple Super Bowls just because of all the racist things that was going on in the NFL. You know, dating all the way back from uh, the Kaepernick and the kneeling and uh, just you know the whole train they was on. But now I feel like they're trying to right their wrongs and give us that platform, give us that respect that we need. I think Usher represents the black culture uh you know yeah. a lot so putting him on that platform mm -hmm. and who they had before him last year J -Lo the and Shakira. no no it was rihanna then yeah, it was uh dr drake with oh yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, then yeah. It, so last three uh, uh, Super Bowls been black. They've been they've been stepping it up with the because Rock Nation. Yeah, Rock yeah. Nation, Jay Z, mm-hmm. and everybody mm-hmm. uh, contributed. I like to that a lot though. Yeah. I feel like they're definitely writing their wrongs, and you know that's that's show change and growth yeah. in it. Yeah, because plus plus most Americans have grown up with Usher. Oh yeah. The demographic back in the day, the stereotype is that you know, country white white music is the mainstream American music, but now hip hop is America's music. Mm-hmm. You know and all races and denominations uh grew up listening to usher you know and singing just as loud and know every word just like we do so uh it feels like but if you don't give it a chance you'll never know you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying mm-hmm. so i i think it's a, i think he deserved it you know plus it's good to go and watch something to to artists that i grew up listening to you know is usher an icon or yeah. no yeah for absolutely. sure yeah absolutely what makes usher an icon the Long, fact longevity exactly yeah, yeah. consistency mm-hmm. exactly yeah, this man got a, a, a top one hundred, uh, top ten record right now. The good record. Oh yeah, it's number one in um the R and B charts. And yeah. his debut yeah. was when nineteen ninety something. It's number one on the R and B side. Crazy. And it's, I, I definitely, know, I think it's definitely like top twenty uh uh or top ten. I don't know. Don't quote me, but if you're number one on R and B, you definitely got to be top ten on the hot one hundred. Yeah, sure. you know what I mean. For yeah. sure. So. And that debuted at number one, mm. number one on radio. And he's done everything with integrity at a high level. I think over the years, his videos be all on point, you know, uh, his music, you know, his collaborations, he doesn't overdo it. If he goes to an album that's kind of, you know, uh, experimental, he doesn't far too far from his demographic. And uh, when he did the Vegas show, it's phenomenal. It's people, people, you know, he had roller skaters in Vegas. He made it yeah. Atlanta. But universal at the same time, he's he's made the city look good. You know what I'm saying? Even though he's from Tennessee, Chatt- Chattanooga, <laughs> Chattanooga, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's from Chattanooga, Chattanooga, Tennessee. But Chattanooga. we 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 definitely claim an Usher. Now nah, we take and, Usher. and who who does Usher <laughs> bring out? Who does he share the stage with? Or should he even share the stage? Chili. Whoa. Why? Why not? I don't know, man. I feel like I don't know. I just was being stupid. But at the same time, it wouldn't be bad to just Do you, make you, it Atlanta all the way. Do you, but you think that it, that uh, the masses will appreciate that? I think it, it, it'll, it'll set the internet on fire. You know what would be crazy? If he start that out like, no, 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 quit playing, quit playing, for real. Like at the beginning of it, bring Chili out. Like he in the beginning of that video. On the Super Bowl? You, you want him to put his, thir- you want to put Chili in his 13 minutes. That'd no, be hard. no, but if you, if usually the, the Super Bowl is a recap of your whole career, the, the highlights. And, and she That's is true. the muse and the person that actually got the music about him. See the R&B don't work unless no, you didn't got no, your heart no, broke. No, 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 no. Listen, listen. No, Confessions is not about Chili. Confessions was she Janet Jackson's boy, story. The, the one before, huh? You got it bad. The yeah, one. you yeah. got it bad. The whole what was the album bad. called? Eighty-seven on one. Eighty-seven on one. Mm. Yeah, that's the album. That, that was the album about Chili. You yeah. remind me of a girl I once knew. And oh yeah. Confession was just the. That the, album. The, the icing on the cake. Confession but. was about Jermaine Dupree. Man, no yeah. people do yeah, wrote that. But the people ain't situation. gonna give a fuck about no goddamn chili on I Super Bowl yeah, Sunday. I went, I went. So who's who he gonna bring out then? Uh, I mean, Lil he could John. bring out Lil John to do. You yeah. got to bring out Lud- Ludacris. Uh, he could Luda. bring out Luda. That's all. That's it. That's all. In, that's it. Lil, that's it. Lil Stop John right and Luda. there. That's hard. Don't do nothing. It ain't nobody else that he didn't did something with that we that uh that uh. We would uh, that's gonna get that shit popping like that. He if you brought Chris Brown now, I think it'd be hot. Who? Chris Brown? They're not gonna clear that. Justin. Hey, Justin. I, I, oh, yeah, I'm Justin. not mad at that. I'm not. I'm not JB. mad at that. I'm for black women. So if Chili <laughs> can be out there. <laughs> yeah. Please, because they like football too. Alicia yes. Keys, uh, my boo. Yeah. Uh, my boo at the Super Bowl. No. 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 <laughs> Is that Chris? Yeah. Set it on. <laughs> Chris, what's man, going on, I man? I thought you was the nation of Islam, man. I ain't wanna... <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, what's up, man? Time out for a Jones session. What's up, man? You got there off the boat and you're ugly, man. <laughs> Big face, man. What's up, man? Man, I've been enjoying y'all, man. I'm watching y'all, man. Oh, it's good to see you. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah hey, hey, man. Hey, <laughs> man. <Yeah. laughs> Hey, the, one of the funniest parts about this video was when we had shot the, uh, the we was doing the, the Desert Storm scene. Yeah. You but was we, in that scene, Chris? I didn't go with y'all. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> Straight like that. Yeah, yeah, we. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we did that late, uh, Lake, Lake Lanier, yeah. Lake Lanier, oh, and shit. motherfucker to this day when they see that video, they really thought I was in Desert Storm. <laughs> it's just how how I shot it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it looks amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but back to Usher, man. Super Bowl. Uh, I think that yeah, like, like I said before, uh, all he needs is just a uh, little John, uh, um, and Usher, uh, uh, little John and Ludacris Lil and John, whatnot, Lil John and, and he can just try to keep keep him once again. It's thirteen minutes. Yeah. It's 13 It's minutes. a melody. Do a melody. Yeah. Get in there, get out of there. Once again, he deserves it. What does it take to be an icon? Man, what does it take to be Consistency, man. An icon? And, and, and fashion and, and being a gentleman, being professional. Fashion. Yep. yep. Um, good business sense. You can't be, you know, begging for your masters on the internet, you know, uh, because that, 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 that lends into you being a strategic, I think, you know what I'm saying? Have and a good team. Even, but let's go back to you, you, what you just said about being a gentleman. Yeah. Even mm -hmm. no matter what you had to say about Usher, he ain't never respond to none of the bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very yeah. classy. Very classy, yeah. man. He do yeah. pretty good at staying out of the headlines too. Like you don't hear a lot of crap about Usher. No, you don't. You don't see a lot of stuff. And another person that's like that too is Ty Dolla Sign. Oh yeah, Ty Dolla Sign. Like you don't really hear bad news about Ty Dolla Sign. You don't ever hear him being in the headlines for cheating on somebody or you know. Because usually, in my opinion, when people who actually are talented and good at what they do, there's no room for people around you that can trigger that. Mm. That's my opinion. Mm. You're so locked in, you attract other people that are locked in because they're going to be the only ones that value what you're doing. That's true. And so, you, if you rehearsing all those choreography moves and going to the studio and traveling. And they see your your, your tone that you setting. Mm -hmm. Everybody's gonna fall in line with that. You know what I'm saying? And it's very it's gonna be a lot of respect for that. No one's gonna want to disturb that because they respect the art form. You know what I'm saying? It's I a lot of artistry that. in music. It's just like clouded by a lot of the you know drama and yeah. you know all the other stuff that goes on. But at everybody's heart, they still are artists. You know what I'm saying? But they still gotta manage to get their you know you know attention. And the only way to get attention through is, is, is now is like through negative stuff, unfortunately. But he hasn't. He hasn't succumbed to that. No, he ain't never did that. Yeah. I think I think uh, it'd be pretty, it'd be pretty dope if he brought out Diddy. I need a girl. Yeah, him and Diddy got a lot of records. Yeah. But they do yeah. got a lot of records. Smash they got a lot of records. Too. Yeah. I don't. I see. I'm not with you on that one. I think Diddy needs his own. Yeah. Diddy is iconic in, in New his York. Own. Yeah. He when it, when it, the, 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 like the Super when the Super Bowl come to New York, you get Diddy. You get you get that. Let, let Diddy go on here. I think that Usher needs to let his light for shine the and hold. Yeah, let, yeah. I don't. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't take it. No other city. But everybody got to be from Atlanta. I got somebody that needed to be at the Super Bowl with Usher. Who that? His U chain. Boy, you stupid. <laughs> that nigga need to spin that motherfucker around. <laughs> Are you stupid? You catch it. You gotta do. And Put yeah, even even with the it, it, just to his <laughs> genius once again. You know, even with the whole Kiki Palmer uh, situation, you know he uh, he embraces it. Mm -hmm. He used that that new song that you was just talking, y'all yeah. just was talking about yeah. and whatnot, and uh, he capitalizes off of it. The situation, you know, what I'm saying uh, he he didn't he didn't cheapen it. He was a gentleman about it, yeah. and you can tell for for real though that Usher do not want your bitch. Right. <laughs> He cool on that. If he wanted to, he could, could take her. I, would, I appreciate it, Kiki Palmer. I ain't even know her ass was that fat and whatnot. I, I like that whole. Well, what was the whole problem with, with him just singing to her? I didn't understand what the problem now, was. I think his boy just had a problem with her booty being out like that. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, she, that's all. That's what he was tripping on. Oh, okay, it wasn't that he sung to her. It was nah, her boot, her, yeah, it was about how she was dressing. Okay, I but then, why well, ain't Kiki Palmer like 23, 24 or some shit like that? Bro, so, you know, sure, that's yeah. some young people shit. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. He so that's how she was feeling, and you can't tell no woman how to dress. And then on top of that, you got to know what type of woman you got. That's and so nice. you know, if yep. she wanna, if that's what she wanna do, you got to go with it. You met her like that. That's yeah. you know, you got to go with it like that. Plus, when hey, she, I know who Usher should bring to the Super Bowl. One hundred percent sure. Okay, the Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> Let's get them boys to the Super Bowl. I'm not mad at that. Hey. I'm, I'm not mad at that. <laughs> I didn't know where the fuck you was fixing to go. Let's get them boys to the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. 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 Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like it. Uh, hot topics, man. Jack, hot to I have a question for you. Go for it. So what would you do if you was Kiki Palmer, uh, baby daddy in that situation? And she was like just in that situation with Usher, uh, Usher as he's serenading her, singing to her, 
and she has that response. She also had a response too. She was kind of lusting over him a little bit. How would that make you feel? Lusting over who? Usher. She was like, she posted another video when he had like his abs out and all some other stuff. He was like wet. It's some real R&B vibes. For, see, for, for, for me, I think there's just straight up clout. You know what I'm saying? So okay. that, that's some shit that's keeping her her movement going. Is uh, you asking me if I'm me being Jack Dayton, Kiki Palmer? I understand what she's doing, and you can't pay for certain publicity, and she needed that shit. For sure. Uh, so I would I would embrace that, mm. and I would support her. Mm. That's what I would do. Once again, I Kiki Palmer, my girl. I know what type of girl I got, and I know that she need that look. And goddamn, I'm like, yo, you should have pulled this little, little it's Audi out. <laughs> Grab him by the navel, pull that motherfucker out like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> get in there, lick that nigga nipple on TV. Get get that money going. You know, embrace that shit. Mm. You got to go on here, pimp her. Pimp her on out. That's what I would have did. Pimp her on out. The pimp her on out. I'm, I'm just in a different space when it comes to relationships <laughs> now. You know, I, I get it. You People going to do what they going to do and Regardless. you let her do what they rather do. Knock, knock. <laughs> Who's there? A scared little boy named Jack. <laughs> I heard you, Jack. No, I'm cool with it. I'm, I'm cool with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What you want me to say? Let me I would have beat your bitch ass. What you want me to say? I mean, what re- can you do? Respectfully, hey, too, she was there by herself. He wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? There's a new clip of Usher singing to get well, about to sing to Gabrielle Union. That nigga Dwayne Wade right there. Maybe you can help <laughs> me with this, Jack. See a real nigga believe in what? Nah, I ain't doing that. <laughs> <laughs> you better believe believing um yeah uh, calling uh, the police on that real uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah fuck that eight ball mjg yes yeah uh, yeah. yeah yeah you can't don't let eight ball uh, mjg gonna get your head locked uh, up right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna say that shit i'm standing on this pimping well go ahead stand on the pimping you do it tune in next week as i stand on this pimping yeah <laughs> and we get all the way canceled. I can't get no more canceled than them all already canceled. Know, yeah, yeah. You you can gonna cancel you on my shit. Thank more you. More. I always wanted to get yeah. canceled. Yeah, yeah. This is my dream. And one hundred percent. Uh, yo, okay. Uh, Kerry Washington. Mm. She just uh, dropped a new book because uh, uh, called Thicker Than Water. Now, what this is about is she was one of the first people that had been artificially inseminated and just found out her daddy wasn't her daddy. Oh. Yeah, yeah, back in the seventies and whatnot. So she's a uh, test tube baby. Wow, As a, that's what they call used to call test tube babies. Is artificial inseminated people. Mm. Yeah, she wow. just found that shit out. And so you know, my whole thing is, you know, how do you deal Damn. with finding out your daddy ain't your daddy? Well, you know, I think most black people can, you know, skip Father's Day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they save a lot of money doing that down I here. do. I, I don't now. give a fuck. <laughs> I wouldn't care. I mean, you know, if it's your mother, I think that'll hurt. But fathers, uh, you know. But I don't you, know. I don't know. If you if y'all didn't know who your daddy was, do you feel like you needed to go find out who your daddy is? Or I don't think I, don't uh, I honestly feel like if I didn't know who my pops was, I would it wouldn't I don't think I would want to just go on a void to go try to find him. I would be like, he needs to come find me. Right, right. Unless he didn't know I existed. Right. But but you was artificially inseminated though, so that means you ain't even supposed to go find him. Oh, you know what I'm saying? So so somebody pretty much just jacked off in a cup. They put it and they poured it in your mama. A sperm donor. Jesus yeah. Christ, Jack. Why her mom do that? I was because she wanted a baby, and then she would do the, the the person that she was with was inadequate inside that area. He couldn't have no. He That's couldn't right. Have yeah. But he raised her like. His own. Yeah. He raised it like it was own. Yep. Do she still got a relationship with him? Yes, yeah, she does. And that was the I wouldn't care. That to me. That's the only thing that would matter to me. I would start there with my mom. Like, hey, what was this situation? Because science and this don't make sense. So as long as my mom is able to kind of let me know where her mindset was at that time and I can start to empathize a little more, I feel like I'll be able to kind of understand a little more. Gay. I think that, you know, Kerry Washington's career probably benefited from being like in that in that that fish out of water. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think we have these uh, you know vibrations that push us to greatness. We don't know why we make the decisions we make, and I think it was all in God's plan. I think it was a manifest destiny for her to, for to be for her to be who she is. Had she had this normal upbringing, maybe she's not the Kerry Washington that we know. Mm-hmm. Maybe she doesn't mm-hmm. feel outside it she doesn't feel like an outsider you know in our own in our own home you know because because your, your soul know where you belong you that's know what right I'm saying? that's true 
So I think it was a it, it worked out for her. I think I think her insecurities uh, benefited her. That's my opinion. So that's just how I feel about that. Do you do you, you feel like it's your kid's business to to know how they got here? Of course, of course. If, I'm talking about like in a situation like that. Yeah, of course. I think I I would owe it to her to uh, explain to her sooner. I wouldn't want her to know like by any other way. I, that, that to me a little deceitful. You know what I'm saying? Just be honest, be real. You know what I'm saying? Give her that give her that option to to know who the other side of her is, not live a lie. You know what I'm saying? Well, I thought you, I thought if you could get like a sperm donor, you can't even you don't even know who that person is. You just yeah, you can, but still to let her know that she is part. Of, that's how she was conceived. She wasn't just our child. You know I what have I'm I have a question for you with okay. that, Gabe. At what point do you tell your child that? Yeah, is that something? Is that I, something at an early I, age? I, I think or? ultimately, when they're about to have their child, mm. is she married? Is she, she have kids? Yep. Yeah, she, she got, got married kids. with two kids. She yeah. should not go into the life. Mm. Giving kids, you know, spirits and bloodlines and passing on, you know, generational blessings and generational curses without explaining why certain things don't really, you know, make sense to her. Because she probably have a whole bunch of unanswered questions and stuff that just weren't, weren't, weren't answered. So I think you owe it to your child. I mean, at some point, if, if you have a functional adult, adult functional relationship with your, with your child, I think that's on the table in my book. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it, it, it couldn't hurt. Let me ask you this. Do you know? Do you know your daddy? I don't. No. Do you care? No, I don't. I really don't. It's a, me neither. Yeah, yeah. Me neither. It, don't, it doesn't but, but, like but, really affect but, but, me. But once again, I know, I know the story on why I don't know. Him. I know. I know the whole everything. It's okay. Not like That's a, what I was talking about. Like That's important. Yeah. Yeah. Where I don't know who he is or where yet. I understand. I get it. I get both sides. So it's closure. Mm -hmm. I got closure. So. I can move on if you want to. I'm not running from him, you know what respect, I mean? Respect, respect. But at the same time, you know, it is what it is. So but I think we owe it to the kids to explain to them, okay, this is what we needed to do at the time. This is your road now. You can go left, you go right. Red pill, blue pill, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So that's just my opinion on that. I know a specific situation, uh, like with Offset, particularly, he didn't have the best relationship with his dad from what I understand growing up. Mm. And there was a, a period of time where he was doing a press run, and I think he went on uh, Breakfast Club or something like that, and mm -hmm. he was, like, not dissing him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? On a couple songs, he might have called him a J or said that he, you know, tried drugs and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. he went there and was like, hey, look, man, I said that to get your attention because we good. Like, come back. Right. You know, I got you. Right. You know what I'm saying? I thought yeah. that was real dope no, how he dope. just put that out there. And his dad did come back, and he yeah. got him a truck and helped him start some a business and some more shit, and now they really cool and they in touch. I mean, if you're able to make life full circle like that. If yeah. God put you in a position where you become the parent and you become the leader of the head of the household, yeah. you pass the jewels. If you can bring, like, I remember Tupac said that, like, he loved his fans because, you know, before he had a record, he didn't have a family. He couldn't feed his, you know, his family. He didn't mm. have a house. Because of his fans, he able to have a house again. He able to put a roof over their heads. You know what I'm saying? People can come to one spot and get together. You know what I'm saying? So. Mm. So I got it. I get it. So if we can go out here in the world and be stronger and more self-aware and, 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 and battle these giants out here in America and, and, and be an artist and, and be able to provide for our family to bring everybody back, and if that's if that's can ha if that can happen, then I'm all for it. You that's know what I'm saying? And if she can do it too, then even better. You know what I'm saying? That's major. Because the person that sell their sperm probably needed the money, right? Yeah, right. obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So that's maybe he needs a little bit of help, not fame, but just sometimes a little financial support or moral support. A little, you know, your life was worth something. It wasn't yeah. all of a, a of a loss. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mental health, especially in black men, man, it's, it's real. You yeah. know, you know, you know, we supposed to be these strong, fearless. You know what I'm saying? Human beings that are uh, uh, physically strong but mentally dependent on yeah. validation from everything else other than our own. You know, mental health. Well, I think that if if he knew that, hey man, I love you, and you was a part of this, even though you wasn't around, that could help him. You know. Him and his relationship going on, whatever he got with his other children, maybe he can, you know, become a better person in that way. But but it, it's mm -hmm. all relative, man. You know, for sure. You know, it's all it's all relative. You know what I'm saying? She could do a um, what's when they take your DNA, the ancestry yeah. um test, African yeah. ancestry, and put it online and find out who her real dad is from the um. This sound good. That from do she know him? This, this no, she don't know. It's uh -huh. just some guy that needed a couple dollars. She look Ethiopian though. She kind of she do. look Habasha. 
or maybe like Somali or something. Yeah, yeah, she, she does. Look, she do look yeah. like she Habesha. She's a little Habesha. And them some of the most beautiful women. I've, I've not. She's say, gorgeous. Yeah, I yeah, dare yes. say the most beautiful women in the world, because they all have the mitochondrial DNA, mm. which is the God gene, mm. Which, mm. which which means most black women in Africa or from African descent have the mitochondrial DNA, and that is the uh, DNA that has all the genetic makeup of all races. So you ever seen a woman with an albano baby? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. I, that's I, mitochondrial. Wow. That's a mutation. So black women are very powerful. Very, very powerful. Let's give it up for black women. Black. Come on. Mm -hmm. Now, just, just to add on to what you just said too, uh, Gabe, um, you, uh, Shaq even talked about, man, he he's glad that his daddy wasn't there. So, because he wouldn't have been who he is now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you imagine mm -hmm. if, if your life is going great and you were able to accomplish the, you know, feats like as far as Shaq did or, or even Offset and whatnot? Mm -hmm. If your daddy had been there, then how would that have, have changed his future? An eight foot loser. Come on now. <laughs> no, seven. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. To be that goddamn tall working at Home Depot. Uh, working at the stable center, changing light bulb. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. With no ladder. Hey, every time I see a tall ass nigga working at some stupid ass job, I was like, damn, his daddy must be in his life. <laughs> <laughs> This man don't got no sense. <laughs> Saw what I did right there. I see what you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Colin Kaepernick, man. You know this guy. Uh, he just um, the Jets. Yeah. He uh, what's what's Aaron Rodgers? He he wrote a, a, a wrote a note to the Jets and told him if Aaron Rodgers, you know, what I'm saying, stay out of the, uh, the it, is not able to come back, he'd like to take his place up out for him and whatnot. How do y'all feel about that? I think the NFL should uh, give him a try again, man. I, I mean. I don't know. I'm pro black, man. I think he really yes. didn't do nothing. No, you ain't. You ain't. You can't be pro black. Yeah, you I, can't be. Yeah, you can't be pro, pro black to say that. Yeah, man. Nah, nah, nah. Let me tell you something. When you a no, hold on. Let me first. Let me go ahead and finish it out. Gabe, how do you feel about that? Uh, I'm over here. Uh, so, um, <laughs> I pointed right to you. <laughs> <laughs> this man here. This is kind of like me though. <laughs> <laughs> no, this man. Um. I would be, can I be vividly honest with you guys? If you don't mind, fellas, let's talk about it. Man, I don't give a damn. Kaepernick, okay, man, look, you got the Netflix movie. I watched it. If the movie would have been good, I'd say, yeah, give him a job. But the movie was all right. The movie wasn't all that. You know what I'm saying? He got a proper tone. He talks proper. I can't get behind that. You know what I'm saying? I'm just playing. Uh, I don't know. I think it's too late. I think the practice squad is what he, he asked to do. Yeah, he's asking to practice. Yeah, just uh, I don't time. know. I, um, I think he sat home a little too long and thought about this some bull. I was, oh, I fucked up, fucked up, you know. <laughs> and I think um, integrity and dignity. He just leave with that shit. You know what I'm saying? To me, do it, do it in again. My heart. Do it again in my heart. Tell him what you're saying. T tell Playboy what you're saying. I, I, I feel like he 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 won. He won. He, he 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 was the first person over the hill. He was the first shoulder to get hit with an arrow. And he took one for the team, us, team us, right? For him to come back and still try to like, you know, get a seat at the table after he didn't actually bought uh, the whole building is kind of like kind of productive. I think his voice is more powerful uh, in the executive room. If you came back and want ownership, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. give me freedom sure, and then you come sure. back and you want to help run the slave field. Like, nigga, that ain't. I feel like they should do something, make something right with him though. Rather they did, they gave him an undisclosed amount of money. And I think a, a position in the executive room. You know what I think? I think that's more powerful than him playing on the field at this point. I think Colin Kaepernick needs to reach out to Ice Cube and help him with that. That's that that's dope. Building. Big three. Yeah. Black. That's big. If you got a problem with these people and this is what you're kneeling about, all right, go go to talk to somebody that look just like you and they yeah. they betting for you to win. And they yeah. putting their money where their mouth is. Yeah. See me myself, I don't I think Colin Kaepernick is super cap. <laughs> <laughs> Emphasis on Kaepernick. Uh, cause I don't understand why would you want to go back and play for some people that you felt like oppressed you and the, you know what I'm saying? Obviously I ain't fucking with you and whatnot and on, on, on the, the NFL side of the team. Uh, we don't know what this nigga gonna do again. Yeah. And yeah, he gonna I'm poison the, the uh, whatever team he go to, he, he gonna poison whoever he's like, like influences and in they might do that shit one more time and disrupt. You know, Malcolm you know, makes a football and shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So he, he looked crazy 
pandering to them, you know, after yeah. you didn't just say it, kiss my ass. Yeah, so it almost make me feel like, hey, when he took a knee, was he tying his shoe and then like, oh shit. Uh, it's, oh, everybody got them on my dick now? Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the knee wasn't against the NFL or his love it was for, for the game. Uh, it was against the police brutality. Police brutality. Right. Yeah, you know what I mean? Awareness. Yeah, but if you, if, you go, if you mean it, <laughs> stand on it. And that's why I say he should go to Ice Cube. Because at least you ain't walking away with your tail tucked between your legs. But, you but he can't. What, look, why go to Ice Cube? The point is what he want to do, he want to play. Yeah. It's the so, love and the passion for it. Yeah, yeah but I, do you want to fuck with somebody that don't fuck with you? If that's the only way that he get, should he go overseas and play? That don't make no he sense. Go, go to XFL, go with The Rock. The go rock. play for XFL if you want to play. But don't go back to your oppressor. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you on that. I agree with go, you. Don't, man, that's, fuck that and fuck them niggas. I like what I you said, though. I the Big Three. I ain't never even knew yeah, about the Big Three. The Big that's, Three yeah. is basically I, a, a league that he's creating for, for ball Come players. on now. That's it. But it was, that's for that's that's basketball. basketball. That's basketball. Oh, I thought he He want to play football. Oh, he, I thought that was, he he's not going to play football, he's just basketball? He can definitely. But he wants to play football. Okay, cool. I get it, I get it. Ice Cube, football. Huh? He can do it for football. They got one called XFL. How at them folks. Yeah, they, they, they just go over there to the rock. He recruiting right now and everything, you know? And he could be the man over fucking there. You did. He'd be like the John Madden and, over there. And now you're talking about ownership. Now you're talking about percentage. Come, okay. Where it Come matters on. at. That's all I was you trying to voice. say. You got a voice over there, you know what I'm saying? So, exactly. But you think the rock gonna wanna take that chance knowing well, fuck that it might yes. make him, it was toxic, he had that toxic ass situation in the NFL and then it might make you know, investors and and that's banks and everybody else that's not want to fund me because they see I'm rocking with this dude. But he do have a point there because that's what uh big, the big three is having an issue too. To make this thing work, that's how it works. Yeah, because they'll tell you not to to do advertisement with with that with that. Yeah, right. Put your foot in your mouth. Yeah. So, I mean, I think he did what he was supposed to do, and a lot of times, the the, the screams from the fans is infectious. And then people get addicted to that stuff. That's the worst dopamine. What Jay Z say? It's stronger than heroin. You look in the mirror like there I am. Oh, come on now. Still so, not see. You. So <laughs> look, when you when you when you when you get in front of those fans and they giving you all that love, you walking in any restaurant, you eating for free, and then one day it all stops. Mm. That's hard to that withdrawal is very hard. That's true. I see artists go through it all the time. I know athletes must go through it. Even preachers, you know, go through mm -hmm. it. You know. He got to figure out how to suffer in silence. That, that that, that, that big going yes. Yeah. Like yeah. You got. You, you have to have an extra strategy, and if if, if somebody told me, is some room for Erica to come on over here? Uh, the other mic over there. We can share mics like uh, like Lisa Marie and uh Rick James. Actually, JT, if she. Oh, you she swap wanna, out with yeah, why, you can why swap out with me? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> hey, y'all give it up for YBT. He about to go catch a flight and whatnot. He'll be back next month. YBT. That's my cousin right there. Young boy taking over. Yeah, both of them my cousin. Oh, YBT and Lil Playboy. That's Erica Duchess. No, I love you. Hey, Marlo, in a minute. Episodes and stuff. Okay. Nice hey. to meet you, Mrs. Dutch. Yeah, let me give you a hug. See, I've never been on a panel with all these smart black men. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what, what you say? What you mean? What, what, what was our other episodes? Yeah. <laughs> all these smart black men. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, he know about my roots and shit like that. That shit turned me on over there. <laughs> hey, tell me more. Tell me more. Yeah. Oh yeah, you do. You, when they say queen, when they yes. talk about black women, it's real. Oh my yeah. God, yeah, I like that. Oh, uh, what's that lady who has the vac the vaccine DNA? Loretta. Harry. Um. Henrietta. 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 Yes. Vax. Yes. Yeah, they took her DNA and created the, the vaccine for all kind of stuff, even yes. the COVID vaccine. I talk about that all the time. Yeah. That's crazy. That's yeah. God. I talk about it all the time. Elaborate on that. I see, it's a lot of people that, uh, that's ignorant of this. Yes. Um. If you don't know, it was this um black woman. She, in her, what she had cancer or something. Mm, what made something them take like her, her cells? She went to the doctor and in the way they checked the cells and whatever her her cells that she had, it was able to reproduce, and it's like still going on to this day. 
is don't stop because you know once Polio. your cell hit the air it's supposed to die something of that sort but hers didn't and it reproduces mm. on and on and on and on Oprah Winfrey did a movie about it yeah she did Netflix. a whole movie about it you got to yeah. look at the movie yeah check it out yeah. it's really deep and I'm not educated on it so yeah I so I can just give you a but little but just look up her name and understand that that's what y'all made of so you know it's mm. real it's Black deep. women should be protected in more ways than one because they're exploiting her and her family don't get no residuals. Imagine yep, curing yep. polio, smallpox, yep. COVID, and nobody get in your family gets any residual income from your from your mama. And I'm saying DNA, right? From her DNA, yes. And they they went and researched and um they what is they they did um research on her children and uh -huh. stuff like that. Messed them up kind of. Mm -hmm. Her children don't got it. Yeah, they ain't got, don't nobody got it. Because mama was the only person. Yeah, ever. mama. Because it's a mu genetic mutation. It's like the, yeah. the X Men mutate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a phenomenon. It's like you being born is a phenomenon. Like only like you're the only one of you in the whole existence of every of, of life, right? right? So that genetic makeup is the same way. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It, it's it's like every generation the mitochondrial DNA kind of gets weaker and weaker. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Is it's, that what killed? Her? That's not what killed her. She had so. cancer. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You think that might have caused her cancer? No, I think that was just kind of maybe just what it was, you know. Yeah, because you know back then, the 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 level and the percentage of cancer was so high. Right. You know, women, they, they, all black women kind of died of well, cancer. Well, what if she didn't even have cancer and they just told y'all that a, the cancer Once again, once again, that's an Yeah, egg. yeah, we don't know. Yeah, because you don't die till you go to the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> For some well, reason. Did, I don't I see I, I think that that's a misconception right there man <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, when I said it I knew you were gonna hit me yeah so, yeah I think that that's a that's a conspiracy theory man yeah uh, can you imagine how uh, just as many people die that don't go to the hospital if not more yeah than the ones that do would you agree with that I agree I agree mm -hmm. it just seemed like whenever you start going that's when shit started. no you just went too late no, yeah, yeah, but it be some other shit like your ankle finna freeze up and fall off and shit. What the fuck, my ankle? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times these medicines are made by people who aren't really that smart. Yeah. They mm -hmm. just know how to read really well and follow directions, mm -hmm. but they ain't got the care or the incentive to actually get it right. They just want to get first to market. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. they're paying lobbyists and, and politicians in mm -hmm. Washington to pass certain drugs to get them to the marketplace so they can make their money. And they go public. It's all. It's all about money at the end of the day. You know what I mean. Mm. So uh, you know, just like with the COVID vaccine, you know, you know, all that stuff was just rushed to market. And Moderna and uh, um, Novavax. Yeah. You know, uh, Pfizer, Johnson and Johnson. How you get a whole <laughs> vaccine in nine days? You know, and then start testing people. It was crazy. Oh well, they had to do something, Gabe. You know, we, we people were dying at an alarming rate, and we are in the, the damn the twenty two thousand and twenties, damn near the Jetsons. You know, you, mm. shit. If, if there's not a some type of uh, alternative or some type of cure to some, what are we really doing? It's, it's cures for everything. We got to get the got get got to get folks right. It was a uh, uh, state of emergency, man. Yeah, niggas but, had to get off their ass. But it was a lot of people that died from the from the from the jab, man. From the vaccine? Yeah. Yes. A lot of Still people. Still dying. Yeah. Strokes, all those heart heart attacks and those blood clots. Who was to say it was from the jab instead of it just being from Popeyes? <laughs> <laughs> who's mean, to say? Who's to say they didn't jab the Popeyes chicken? <laughs> all right. To make Come everybody on. so addictive to Come it. Come on, man. Come on and stay, stay woke. <laughs> Duval mm. voice. Stay woke. Stay woke. <laughs> Cause guess what? Not to take the conversation that way, but scientists have said that the max that people on Earth can have or Earth can hold and facilitate is nine billion people. Yeah, that's the max do. Earth can hold. We're at seven billion right now. That was essentially Earth having a sneeze. Hold on, who said that? Environmentalists, Scientist. scientists. Yeah. And, and, Scientist. and why? Because what, what if we got nine billion people on Earth? What will that do? Well, you have to talk to them. I'm not qualified <laughs> to, to, to say the particulars. But just FYI, okay, the Earth has sneezed, made a, had a sneeze, right? And they say the next one will be catastrophic. That was just a little smidget of what's gonna happen. The Earth don't need help. help. We do. The Earth right. is gonna be around before us and after us. You know what I'm saying? We the ones that's new. All right, it's gonna reproduce itself. We're the ones that gotta figure out how to stay here. The Earth is doing quite fine. You know, it'll cleanse itself, just like the body will cleanse itself. You know, right? So that's my opinion on that. That's deep. He's that so is, right. That is deep. Yeah, but, and then, do you know what? I, I, when you said that shit off the rip, 
I thought it was some bullshit, but now that I think about it. If you think about it. If like, it be too many point. niggas on this bitch. Yeah. Yes. Because it, it is too many niggas on the highway right now, and that don't feel good when you're trying to get to the airport. And then it's all about how much they can control. True. Yeah, yeah. How many they need before it comes out of control. Yes. Yeah, and food, people have to feed, be, you have to feed 9 billion people. Yes. That's a lot of food. Yes. I, I ain't yes. even think about it like that. Yes. I think you are right. Yeah. I'm, I'm loving this show. God. It's so educational. Damn. Yeah, it's a lot of people. Like, and also too, um, you ever heard of Bread and Circus? No, this no. You heard of who? Bread and Circus. I've eaten some bread at a circus before. It's basically uh, <laughs> the, the the great, any great civilization have to have civil engineering, which is order and structure. So the Colosseum in Rome, was built to create um, a release of tension. There's a lot of people having problems like, you know, I sold him some grain and he didn't pay me back my money, whatever. He stole my he stole my uh, my horse or something like that. So the Colosseum was put there to let out aggression. And then they would sell food there. And they realized that with entertainment and food is how you control civilization. That's wow. what Sunday night football, Monday night football, and why the stadiums are filled. Yes. That's That's wired in us. Yes. Come on. Every man. time you yell for your team, you're letting out aggression that could potentially kill somebody. You're letting out little spurts of aggression, microaggression. Without that football game that's built built up anger and tension, me against you. That's that's better than war. The recreational war. Damn. So it's that's... all by design. This is what if you if you if you study civil engineering, you study uh, you know, great civilizations like Rome and you know. Uh, Africa and Egypt. This is how they control the masses and kept kept the problems down at bay. But not to be so deep. No, no. I, yeah, no, I want I you like to stay it. here. Stay in, stay in this space. I uh, love cause, it. Because uh, Eric was right. Let's go <laughs> check this out. I was having a, a conversation with you a while back about the trickle down effect in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And then like right after I had this conversation with you, mm -hmm. me and T-Rex was having the same conversation. Mm -hmm. And he said the exact same thing mm. that you did. Mm. Remember, we was talking about that with the with the whole uh, the the um, uh, uh, when when COVID hit uh -huh. and then how it affected the businesses in Atlanta okay. and uh -huh. all this other stuff. And then it goes to the trickle down effect with the the, the between the strip clubs yeah. and the balling and yeah. the businesses. Yeah, and I, I was talking to, to someone the other day. I was like, uh, the first thing black men do when we take a risk with our lives to if we were drug dealers and moving weight and all that stuff. What well, the first thing we do when we come back to the city? Take it to the strip club and just throw it throw it back to them, right? Black people are the only people that kill their hunters and wonder why they're starving. Dang. You know what I mean? So America is ta has taught us to kill our hunters. And then the women have to go out here and hunt on their own. But they wow. can't hunt how we hunt. Right. We hunt for real. This is what we're wired to do. Look how, it's, look at you compared to this one. You know what I'm saying? You see your DNA, yeah. Right. It's in your, it's, it's, it's in you. It's so if they can you. remove the person that feeds us, then they have to be relying on the government to feed them. And their loyalty is going to be with whoever feeds her child. So we are now irrelevant to the situation. You know? That's how I be looking at it like, man, this is not, this is not really like, I don't think it was on purpose, but it's like, okay, all right, let's just see how this plays out. And it's playing out like better than they could even imagine in a mission. Dang. Now, now, uh, but with a caveat, that's a symptom. That's not the problem. The problem is that uh, we're the first generation that actually had disposable income through upper mobility. We had first generation where you didn't really miss a lot of meals, right? You had a roof over here, even though it was, it was funny, but that wasn't a norm, right? So we finally get a situation where we're part of the economical structure of America and we're making money. You know what I mean? Everybody didn't really have a lot of money growing up in the 80s. 2000s, not so much. So financial literacy is something that's new to our generation. So we get the financial access, but the financial literacy, well, the next generation behind us will come even stronger with that. You know what I'm saying? It's just like with civil rights. They, they marched, right, so that we can sit in the restaurant next to white people. You know what I mean? It's some people that die that don't even understand what that's like. But they didn't think about it like that. They thought about it with, if I gotta die, what's on the Dr. Dre album? If I gotta die for this little nigga right here to have a future, well then I'm a dead motherfucker. We don't have mindsets like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, everything we do for us for that right now, instant gratification, Instagram, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We gotta get to the point where, Damn. you know, 
uh, we gonna do some shit, but it ain't for for me to see. It's for motherfuckers. They say real kings plant trees for people for, for, for leaves they'll never see you know what i'm saying dang so it's like you gotta do it like that you know what i mean when you do it like that that's when you'll be okay with the people dr- throwing the money in the air because that's all they know but guess what somebody watching it and they're smart enough to realize the next generation we gotta have faith in them and we gotta plant a situation for them to have ownership like this show and this building 85 south this legacy you know what i'm saying look at all these black people in here when i started in atlanta man them folks used to man they used to put pictures of my picture in the in these businesses and say do not rent to him. That's what I had to do wow. to just 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 to get a camera, to get a lens. Them folks wasn't letting be, uh, me do nothing. You know what I'm saying? So, but look at this. Twenty years later, everybody everybody in here is is black. You know what I'm saying? But if I would have just stopped, me like, nah, okay, y'all win. Let me just go be a PA. No. I'm coming and I'm bringing you. I'm bringing whoever want to come, whoever want to work. We working. I don't care what artists I'm working with. And that's just, that's what it's about. The next person has got to be a service. And I think when you have that mentality, you ain't worried about if you get it or not. Of course you got to survive. You got to eat. But when you thinking about it, like you got to say, okay, I'm going to do this shit for the person that's coming behind me. I'm going to lay the groundwork for the person behind me. Like I said, the first person over the hill is the person that gets the arrow. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to take all these hits. So hopefully you have a clear, you know what I'm saying? Hope did that. So what? You wouldn't have to go through that. That's what I'm saying. You know what yeah. I mean? And if we have that mentality, then the next generation is going to have no choice but to, to have the, the comfort and the privilege and the, and, the, and the convenience to sit at home and be on the internet. And one day they're going to stumble upon stocks, bonds, you know what I'm saying? Financial literacy, wham, bam, we got it. And we still hustling. And we still making it rain. And we still knowing how to shoot videos and be in on top of that. So what, what's happening is we're creating this, sub, not, I hate to say it, but a supreme race. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh-huh. If you feel like that, considering your mindset, then what do you think about Kaepernick going forward just to take that back to a circle? Because that's the exact same thing. Well, I, I, you just said he took the hit. I, I think, I think. Didn't, didn't nobody pick up with it. I, 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 I think Usher is the result of that. Usher don't happen if Kaepernick don't get hit. Wow. Dr. Dre don't have, yeah. see what I'm saying? It's yes. happening. Yeah. And the reason why we don't think he should come in, because now you're trying to take the light off Usher and put it back on you. You seeing the results of your ministry. You seeing the fruits of your labor manifest, but now you're yeah. going to say, hey, but 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 what, 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 but that's the way it is. Yeah. When I, yeah, the cuss kind of like Jesus coming back and being like, hey, motherfuckers, I, I, I died for, you know, yo, what the fuck, man? Hey, what, what's going on? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, you, he got to go ahead and do what he did so we can, yeah. you know. Uh, it's all about understanding your saved. purpose. Understanding your purpose. So, I just was talking about that. Yes. Correlate Usher and the Super Bowl. Yeah. As a part of the movement that Kaepernick went through. I think, I think so. Everybody yes, else, yes. Oh, still making these millions and the other dudes who stood up and got off the bus. I see, I see too many black people turning tail and running when they need to be standing with somebody else because they ain't going to do nothing but flip the switch and take it off social media or put it on another particular thing and mm-hmm. come up with a crate challenge or an ice challenge and the rest of the majority fall to that. Mm-hmm. They don't go with what, what needs to be stay the course. I don't see stay the course. But one thing about when, you, when you're leading people, you don't ever want to over, overshoot your target. Once you get your target, you have to... Think about the, the the masses, not just think about ourselves and our own emotions. Emotions can get us uh, back to where we started. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We got to have a plan. And what Jay-Z okay. did was, there's only so much we can do. It's not our league. And where we're strongest at is uh, galvanizing people through music and dance and things of that nature. So that's our strong point, you know? Yeah, and you know, once again, Kaepernick, was compensated for that and it's a, he has other alternatives and it just yeah. don't look right when you come in you come in hot and you 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 make a stand the way he made it and whatnot and then you don't you you want you you big and the same people once again that oppressed you to 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 for a seat at the table um you, jim brown didn't do that yeah oh uh, uh, yeah. uh, what was my man name bill russell didn't do that yeah them folks stood on that shit and they kept Muhammad Ali didn't do it. Muhammad Ali mm. didn't do that. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He looked crazy begging these folk and whatnot. And he was, he he appeared to be strong. He was a strong, light-skinned man. Yeah. But everybody, <laughs> but everybody just, just because everybody uh, are physically <laughs> strong to mean they mentally strong. The mental fortitude is, 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 is very, mm-hmm. just like, you, you obviously going to lift more weights than me. 
Or my, I may have stronger mental fortitude. That's right. You know what I'm saying? I think we talked about this the other day. Yep, we sure did. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, you heard of dental hygiene. I brush my teeth today. But most people haven't heard of mental hygiene. Right. Right, mm -hmm. wow. Right. You, you definitely yeah. have it's to. So, put, this is so right. refreshing. You got to check with your mind, uh, what, yes. what you put inside your mind yes. and whatnot. You definitely it's have so to true. audit your thoughts. Right, and you we can't, and, and anybody that is looking for validation and credit must really need it because if you if you if you live by the validation, you die by it when it don't come. That's right. You yeah. know, so the inner inner confidence, right? Uh, anticipatory obedience to yourself, anticipate being doing the right thing and, and doing the hardest thing first in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Having a list, not every day, but when you think about it, do it or the night before. You have to carve out time to to. I know I'm kind of like going on tangents here, no, but um, no, this, this shit makes sense. You gotta you gotta carve out the time. Like, I didn't understand like how do I be a better director? I'm still trying to figure out how to. How do I execute bigger visions? And how do I, it's the hardest thing in directing 20, 30 people, sometimes 100 people, is to infuse my enthusiasm about something I'm writing in a room by myself and getting it all the way down to the last person with the same enthusiasm and the same vision, right? That's hard, how do I do it? But you have to figure out a time where you're not doing anything else, but figuring out how to do that. It's not just gonna come to you as you like, just running into a wall and just impulsively doing it. You have to plan. Once again, I said earlier, the choreography and, 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 and talking to people and communication, that's our weakness as black men, as leaders, you know what I'm saying? Or black people in general, is that we don't carve out time in our life to study and to plan and write stuff down and, and figure out a route to wherever we wanna go. And when it's time, and whenever I have that paper or whenever I have that, that plan and someone comes to me with a, with a discrepancy or a, a misunderstanding, I instantly know what to say because I've already been it. in this moment mm -hmm. before you even knew this moment was existing. Yeah, you know how to shoot longer than me, but you don't know this material like I know this material. So if you know the material and you can create your material, then you're going to always be able to, you know, problem solve. You'll be able to be more focused and you can be able to not, you don't need validation from the people that, that you work with. Hey, mm. yeah. Well said. If you live by the claps, you're going to die by the booze. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, let, let's start with where you start uh, directing and everything. How, yeah. how did it, you make the, the pivot from being a comedian? Uh, to a, I was a I was director. in a movie with Reese Witherspoon and Patrick Dempsey. And Patrick Dempsey is like, I was just doing my thing. And I was an extra, and I seen a, my job was just to just be in the corner, just watch out. But I took it so seriously, man. And I didn't know who Patrick Dempsey was. I didn't know, it was Sweet Home Alabama, I don't know. Me and Pooh Carter went down there trying to just be an extra. You know, we just extras. And they put me out the scene. I didn't realize the camera way up there. I'm, but I'm so locked in to my little extra role. <laughs> I didn't got my little skull cap, rolled it up. I looked on the ground, I seen a, a little cigarette butt. And I picked the cigarette butt up, but wasn't lit, and started acting like I was smoking it. Little did I know, Patrick Dempsey was in the limo watching me the whole time, rolling, just, just completely <laughs> going like nuts, saying cut, cut, cut. And put his arm around me. It was like this guy is so into it. You know what I mean? He was just so like tickled by how serious I, because I was dead serious. I was extra, extra. Yeah. If you could have won an Academy Award for an extra. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been nominated, right? <laughs> so uh, that really gave me some some confidence to really, because at that time it was just me just doing stuff. But when he gave me that, you know, quote unquote validation, it kind of, my young mind, it kind of got me going. And then I started attacking everything aggressively, you know, in, in the city. And I got this um, independent movie and um, it was really weird. They was wanting black guys to wear KKK outfits, right? And it was a comedy, obviously. And I got the part and then, um, <laughs> And so uh, we were shooting a movie and somebody called the police on us. We was in Stone Mountain. Mm. So we outside, uh, and it was a low budget movie. So mm. we had no permits. We had guns with Klan outfits on. So somebody obviously called the police on us. Yeah, in Stone Mountain. And so- Is this, was, was this the one I was at? I don't know. I don't with think- With me, you was in season, we- No, nah, no, nah, this was way before Oh, that. got you. This is okay. like 99. Okay. This is a long time ago. Okay. So, um, you know, the police come bum rushing in. I'm smart. I'm from Memphis. I had a warrant. So I go in the back and hide out. Yeah. And so they check everybody's ID, said, let me go get mine. So I go in the back and just hide out till everything gone. 
So the director is named Ben Morgan. And uh shout out Ben Morgan. He uh he was so nervous after that. He was just all oh, his confidence had left. So we in the scene, we we you kept on doing another scene and he was nervous and he had the camera and he was directing because back then you had to shoot and direct at the same time, right? And so uh, I was on the ground or something, I was in the scene in his room, I never forget it. And when he was finished directing, he would like hand the camera off to whatever actor just standing next to him, never felt. But this time I was the actor that was standing next to him. He turned to give me the camera and he looked the scene that was me and he turned away from me and gave it to somebody else. Mm. I never forgot how that made me feel. Wow. I said, I went home. I said, why did you do that? Because I was excited. I said, like, okay, I get to hold the camera. The, the, the power is in my hand. He looked and seen it was me. I'm the biggest guy in there. I'm the biggest hands in there. He didn't let me. I said, okay, I wasn't going to drop it. I said, no, there's some power in that camera. That's where the power is at. You know, and once I realized that that's where the power was, I shift my focus from being in front of the camera to figuring out why he didn't want me to have that camera. Huh. And the full circle, what I did was I hired him to be in a T.I. Joe video and I made him be in the camera. <laughs> and so he doesn't know. He At the end, you see him saying directed by Gabriel Hart. He don't know until now I made him do that on purpose because of that moment. Wow. If you go, if you go see that takeoff video, yeah. that's him. Get the fuck out of here. The white dude that had him running around Atlanta for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you you talk that crap. Hey. Listen, that day right there. Hey, I'm sorry, but yeah, I'm sorry, but oh, you so you still fuck with him? Uh, I haven't seen him in a minute, but yeah, he, he we cool. Oh, okay. It wasn't like that. It was just it was just he didn't know no better, but I did. Gotcha. I was woke woke. Understood. Yeah. Right, but I was aware, and I just was like, it just really was appalling to me because mm -hmm. I was just, just admired the people that had the camera. I just had affinity for camera for some mm -hmm. reason. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Just I just loved the way it looked and. It seemed mystifying to me. I was I was curious. Mm -hmm. And I was like, here's my chance to just hold it. I didn't want to do nothing with it. In fact, the day before, I think I was at uh, an outcast video. I was the extra in. The day before Leah died. Do you think if uh, he would have let you hold that camera, you would have not got that mind frame and that inspiration? I probably would have. I it? probably would have still trying to be like an actor. Uh, I probably would have been in front of the camera 100%. I would have been 100% just because I was locked in in that. I was. I'd seen it from when his dad cast me in that play mm -hmm. to that day. I was just, I was on it. I was, that's all I was doing. I was doing comedy to get better at acting. I wasn't doing comedy because I thought I was funny. Mm -hmm. I understood back then I need stage presence and timing and the thing called I am a pentameter. You know, it's like when you see a joke and that time between they laugh and your next joke, mm -hmm. that's a rhythm. That beats. Right. That's called I am a pentameter. So I understood back then that you needed to have that locked in because you're not only talking to the person in the front of the room, but the person in the back of the room, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. And then you're also talking to different educational levels. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So your mm -hmm. job as an actor is to project and to to, to uh, inspire throughout all type of uh, you know you know educational levels. So I was really deep into it like that, but that made me pivot. That made me pivot. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I said he protecting that thing a little too hard. You know what I'm saying? Did you finish the movie? Yeah, they finished it, but once again, back in the day when you do movies, you just did the movie because you were so, like, mm. you just ambitious. You just want to do something. You had no distribution. You know, it's it's, it's finished. I never saw it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I never saw it, but um, we shot for a long time. But yeah. Next chapter. Yeah. You you um, you you, you start shooting your own situations. Mm -hmm. How do, what does that look like? I mean, you know, I was like the, I was just like an independent rogue do it yourself guy, you know? I didn't even have a camera I was getting booked to shoot videos. I'll get the video and then try to figure out where to get a camera from. I'll call everybody, you know what I'm saying? And you know, I, I had a buddy of mine, he had a red camera when it first came out. And then uh, I remember one of the Jeezy videos we worked on, I think I get a lot of that. Hold on, before you go on to that, uh, tell, tell them about the shit we were talking about last night. What? With the uh, tip video, I'm serious. Oh my goodness. Nigga. In that moment when I was being an actor, I was doing all these videos and <laughs> we, I had just done a, I, I can't remember if it was before or after, but I just, I was just, I was, I was supposed to be in brown skin with India and Irie. I was supposed to be the brown skin. Mm. I was supposed to be the brown. I mean, the whole week I was brown skinned. Right, the whole <laughs> week I had roommates. I was shitting on them. I was like, I was walking around like, nigga, I made it. Like I would take digs. <laughs> uh, oh man, I had already played. I had my clothes laid out. I was on the phone with the cast director, Tim Story. Tim Story is the director. That's right. Tim Story ended up doing Barbershop, Barbershop 2. He's doing Fantastic Four. Well, he picked me to be brown skin. 
But I guess I didn't look old enough. I'm young. I look young now, but I look even younger back then. Mm. And so she wanted to use her boyfriend. Mm. But I didn't know it until I got to the set. So I get to set. Which was Music Soul Child, right? No, it wasn't music. It was some guy. Some guy. It wasn't music. No, it wasn't him. It he was in another video. I know that gotcha. video. Like, like yeah, I, I just, that was a pivotal. Point it was. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, I, I understood once the video came out because I wasn't gonna do all the stuff he was doing in the video, like flipping and all that jujitsu stuff. Gotcha. He was really into it. I was just just faking, you know. Mm -hmm. Is every nigga with dreads for the calls? For the calls, for the falls. So don't get caught up in the appearance. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> they were caught up in my appearance because I was all the way into that finger snapping thing at the time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but uh, he, he was fake eccentric like a oh, motherfucker. day long, <laughs> nigga. This nigga was dating girls with goddamn ah! and shit, and shit, and incense burning and everything. Well, my girls with dreads, it would be stribbles and shit. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just roll them up, put it under the lace front, like yeah. bitch. Give it up for Afro Sensei. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, but they out there though. They they fine. They, they, they. No, no, they, yeah, they fine. But yeah, man, you know, I did that video, or I didn't do the video, and it was on CeeLo's so birthday, old. and we was out there kicking it. Me and CeeLo was just chopping it up, mm. and so I kind of got upset. But what was the point of that? Yeah, you talking about that? I'm serious video. Oh, so yeah, after that you? video, no, I kind of tell what happened on the video. Okay, okay, okay. So after the Indian Ire video, I kind of just got a, a reality check. Oh, I'm back to regular guy. I'm a regular mm -hmm. guy. I'm just one of y'all now. I'm like, everybody ignoring me and stuff on the bus and stuff like, like, ah, oh, nigga, thank y'all all that. So we get to the TI set and we look at the car sheet. We had Bankhead, bounce, the bounce on Bankhead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Pastor Troy had just bought it. So as soon as I get there, me and Food Stamp was my homeboy. He had dreads like him, right? Me like and mine. Me, yeah, me and Food Stamp. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He, he used to have dreads just like mine, but uh, they were way longer. Yeah. And he was way more Jamaican than me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So uh, he looked Rainbow like fake African. He looked like sexy red with dreads. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. That's my boy. Shout out to Fredo, shout Fredo out, Davis. Shout out <laughs> Big little bastard. So uh, <laughs> we get out the van. I see Pastor Troy. Hey, Pastor Troy. I give. I try to sell him a hook. That nigga walk off and just leave me. So my my self esteem. So when you walk off, when you get to anywhere in Atlanta, your self esteem when you need a house be here. And when you interact with people, it just slowly de be depleting like a video game. Yeah. Mm. So Pastor Troy knocked it down about 45%. But I had just enough in audacity to go to the set where T.I. was at. So on the car, she just said T.I. was the artist. Nobody knew who T.I. was. They were like, what's the T.I.? What's that, Shawty? What's the group of? Is it, what is this, Shawty? So we get in the van and go to the to the to this like little trailer park off Bankhead, right? We get there and Shawty Low pulling up. So Shawty Low brought the cars there for the video shoot. The T.I. first video. Pharrell over there, Jermaine Dupri over there, Eddie Crew over there. All right, so me and Food Stamp, we walk, and the director like looking around like, ah, ah, ah. So he's like pointing, so I think he pointing to Food Stamp, cause Food Stamp always used to get them kind of roles, like, you know, the real thug roles. Mm -hmm. You know, cause I look like old good boy and yeah, stuff. But uh, Food Stamp had the look, had the gold too. So I'm thinking he talking to Food Stamp. So the, so the, so the crowd splits open. And then we just me and him just walked to the front of the to the to the crowd, and Chris Robbins said, "Put him in the front, that'll work." And I'm like, "Yeah, go ahead." He said, "No, no, 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 you." My heart sunk. Like, oh, okay. So then it's Beanie Man, it's girl named Mandy, and uh, some other model. We get in there, man. You would have thought it was my video shoot. <laughs> wow. You would have thought. <laughs> Cause nobody knew who Ti was that was like with us, the extras, the people that didn't yeah. know. The industry people knew exactly who Ti was what? and knew I was on some bullshit. <laughs> but the way everybody was excited that I was like walked off the van. You gotta understand, they walked me from the van to to the director Chris Robinson. For real, and everybody sitting there. It looked like I supposed to be there. Right. I looked like I'm part of this shit going on. Yeah, nigga, I, I, I'm trying to find crafty. I don't know what's going on. So now I'm in the scene with Beanie Man, Mr. Or oh, Nah Nah Nah, mm. nigga. They play they play that music. I'm like, oh shit, this shit jamming. Nah 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 Nah. nah, nah. I get a nigga to high five. That nigga high five me back. I bump chest him and shit. <laughs> we going back and forth. We got chemistry. We doing kid all kind of shit. I mean, we we rocking that shit. When we stop, everybody start clapping. Everybody energetic. Then I hear dust coming from the back. <laughs> Hey man, say man, you know what I'm saying, man. Hey, check this man. out, man. Put the service amount, man. Check this out, man. If you ain't got no record deal, man, don't look at no motherfucking camera, nigga. <laughs> From 45 percent to zero. <laughs> nigga. Oh, what I say, hey man, say man. Hey man, say man. Check this out, you dig, man. If you ain't got no record deal, he was saying it 
I'm right here, <laughs> but he looking that way. Everybody know he talking about me. I, I would just get the pat down, like with you know how the people come pat you down <laughs> and you the star. I wasn't the star no more. Yeah. Boy, he cut my nuts off. Yeah. <laughs> you said they found Dad. out you wasn't Ti. I was not Ti, but I was. <laughs> I was it. I was it. I T I. <laughs> Nigga, and I told him about this. He had no idea what I was talking about. But yeah. I did. But if you go and look at I'm serious video, you gonna see him. I'm right. I was there from day one. Yeah. From day one, before anybody was there, I was there getting cussed out by the king. See, people gotta deal with the the nice Ti, the nice Gucci, the nice Jeezy. I had to come up with the the, the, the alpha the, versions of those with guys. The west side. Man. Yeah, with the west side. West side. I slap eyes and throw the show love, nigga. Hey, me why? Be easy. Oh, you know I what I'm saying? Man, Ti wasn't no man. Ti is a king, man. Straight yeah, up, man. He Cause he was bold. He was real bold, man. Yes, yes, and he yes. he put Atlanta on the map in a way where Jermaine Dupri was just really he was doing it, but he put the stamp on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. For the for the people that had the dialect and the vernacular that, that he had, right? You know and, what I'm saying? He ain't scared. Really talk. He ain't scared, man. Hey, could the I DJ be around this man, all this man not scared. That's that's. I ain't never seen no light skinned man like that. Light skinned. I ain't never. My favorite verse for T.I. is never scared. Never scared. Oh, yeah, he scared. Oh, my God. That's never scared. That's what they cookies. for him. That's man, what took I'm him a big head, nigga. I'll take, take your cookies. cookies. Yeah. Yeah. Why you feeling Damn. sorry? Damn. That he song. asked for it. Woo. Come on, that nigga. That nigga said, I'm going to choke your ass. ass. Yeah, like, like Drake did that, that bitch. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't playing with these niggas. They ain't playing with no rookies. Don't do that the first time, Man, come we feel we that shit. We want to choke that yeah. bitch out. Like Dre did that yeah, bitch. We feel that Sorry, bitch. whoever that bitch is. Yeah, yeah. 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 Shit, been choked. You remember the last time you choked the bitch? You were like, I did that shit like Dre did. Dre did this shit too, and too. <laughs> the old tip, not the new tip. Yeah. Oh, but yo, yeah. next chapter. Yeah. You get your first booking, you know, to. Woo, my first booking was in Brunswick, Georgia. Remember, you did that one too. Oh, yes, it was Slim But that was some bullshit. Yep, it was. Uh, but, you know, you do whatever. Little, little hood dudes doing whatever for, you know. But that's why I cut my teeth at or whatever. And then my first booking was, uh, I had did this uh, video for uh, Neo. And he had did this re remix for Lil Wayne, Amelie. And so me and Bangladesh, we was real cool. I was doing his content. I was trying to, like, beg Lil, uh, not Lil Wayne, but uh, Bangladesh to do his Bangladesh TV network on YouTube. Because mm -hmm. mine had got taken down because of Def Jam suing me for doing all their artist videos, you know, un mm. un unofficially, you know, cause the video is looking good, as good as the real video. Mm. So like, yo, uh, you've seen a cease and desist emails to me all the time, flagging my videos before monetization. So they had deleted all my stuff. So I was just trying to use my skill to help whoever else was out there. And uh, um, I remember we had, he had flew us to the BET Awards in LA and his song was in every car, a milli, a Lil Wayne. Like he made the beat, Sean Dre, Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. He made the beat and every song, every car that drove by was playing that shit. Even Suge Knight pulled up to the Beverly Hilton playing a Millie. I'm like what? And I have footage of this, of Suge Knight getting out of his car playing a Millie. Crazy. Wow. So uh, I got amped, you know, I'm a hustler. I'm, I was shooting Atlanta videos in Atlanta for okie doke artists. I'm like, bro, Lil Wayne not shooting your video to your song. And uh, why don't you do it? He's like, how are we gonna do that? I said, well, all these people doing remixes to your song, let's, these niggas right here, they're gonna, Neo right there. Like, as I'm talking, Neo walks up. As I'm saying this shit, Neo walks into the conversation, like, what's up, wow. bang? Nigga, we shooting tomorrow. Okay, I'm with it. He said, okay. So I go, I shoot, the, uh, I, I scramble, get some money from bang, find out how to get a studio, get a DP. Uh, I met on tip video shoot. <laughs> The same camera guy that shot me in the series, I actually kept in contact with him and he did the Bangladesh, uh, he was my DP for the Bangladesh uh, Neo video. Wow. Called him, he did it for free and uh, called some other little people and shit and they rocked that shit, you know what I'm saying? And uh, we put it out, that shit went to a million, like at the time a million views, followers, views was like a big deal on yeah, YouTube. It was. Yeah. Yeah. And that shit went viral and the next thing I know, Lil Wayne had shot his video cause it just was such a, it's, it was cause Neo rapping was such a big thing. It was like, it went viral, you know what I'm saying? And, the, and then uh, it made Lil Wayne have to shoot the video to his shit before he shot a video. Cause he was shooting a video to a whole nother song. And then he just actually stuck that video in while he was shooting another video in LA. Yeah, that's why he was yeah, walking yeah, around the yeah, whole time yeah, one shot. Yeah, that was based on me putting that video out. Cause I couldn't understand why that wouldn't be the lead single. Like, okay, this needs to be, you know wow. what I'm saying? But the reason we shot the video is cause we tried to get in the BET Awards and couldn't get in. 
And it was like, man, fuck this shit. Them niggas got you fucked up. I'm hyping myself up, but at the same time, it's like, you know, you know, I'm hyping him up, but really I made it about the video. Cause I really wanted to do that video. I really felt like that video need to be, that shot, it should be a video to that song. That shit was so hard. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That was my first meaningful, significant one. And uh, I thought the phones was gonna ring and everybody was gonna call. <laughs> I'm sitting back once again, my cock got my clothes laid out, the same clothes from uh, Indian Ari. I'm gonna put that outfit on, yeah. goddammit. And nothing, <laughs> nigga. Not a goddamn thing. Most cease and desist. Yeah. Take this shit down. Well, you, do you stay positive doing those points? Because you said you went low, but it seemed like you kept going. Yeah, I kept going because, you know, I, I didn't I didn't know any better. I didn't know I was not, you know, I didn't know I was ruffling any feathers, but I was actually making progress. That Those those steps were steps towards, okay, we got to deal with this guy, all right? So uh, I think I did Rocco next. So Rocco is a real artist. He signed to Def Jam, right, under L.A. Reid. Some kind of way, I get a Rocco video this morning. And I knocked that shit out the park. You know what I'm saying? Like me and Rocco are friends to this day because of that video. Like we was together like a whole two, three days. You in the video too. You. I'm in the video. Yeah, yeah. He playing tell, the uh Tell him what unblock me too. Oh, Rocco. Yeah. The Dunn. Yes. Unblock Erica what did Duchess. You do? I, and you know what it's so crazy that he that he blocked me. How you know he blocked you? Cause I went back to his page. Look, uh -huh. look, look. It was when Instagram <laughs> first started. What was it? 2012? When was it? You, let me find out you were stalking Rocco. No, 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 no. Let me no, tell really. you. No, no, no. I ain't gonna say the whole thing, but when 2012, when Instagram first started, my name was Nacho Chick. That was my name, like from his album, his, mm -hmm. his song, Nacho Chick. And I just used to say little stuff, and one time I was on there with somebody talking with somebody else. I don't know if he's seen the comments, but I, I love, I'm a Rocco fan. Like, no, like that's ATL. Like, you know what I'm saying, that's my, my dog. And then I, I was just talking to that person. They were just saying subliminal things. And I was just like, yeah, girl, I know about my, my baby daddy the same way. And it was like 2012, next thing I know, I was blocked in this day. I'm like, daddy, he read them comments. But I didn't do nothing, like I love Rocco. So if you talk to him, but some comedian, Erica Duchess said, I'm blocking. I don't know how much pull I got. Yeah, I'm blew life, up now since 2012. Yeah. Like, dang. Did you you ever seen him since? I have not seen him. Then I used to be the plug at Avis. I used to give him his cars and everything. Did you? You ain't say nothing then. No, I was Erica. My last name then. Yeah. He don't course. know Erica Duchess. He yes. don't know this one. But I was the person who used to hook him up at the um, rental car company too. And you ain't want to tell him who your secret identity is. Who was you talking about? No, I have he not seen. I have. I was not doing comedy and all yeah. that stuff you back then. He, she had she not made the, uh, the, the yeah. defense yeah. car lady. Yeah, yeah. yeah he don't. He don't know this Erica. But tell him unblock me, Rocco. Unblock yeah. me. Yeah. That she. He just heard you. Just yeah. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why he had me blocked. You gonna tag him in there in this yeah. particular part? Yeah, I was like, I had. Show. I said, hey, did me for Ava. I'm blue cousin. You know, little Eric. Blah, blah, blah. Block. Damn. Damn, 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 damn. Yeah. <laughs> so we gonna take, to let's pray, Lord Jesus, right now. Hallelujah. Yes. yes. I'm like Erica G. We yeah. down in Rocco Finger. I don't care about Ball Alert. They got me blocked too, but I don't care about God. that. God damn, Eric. Don't I don't even, care about Ball Alert. Right now. But, but Rocco, I want him to unblock me. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he got Jesus paid. She blocked on Jesus paid. Oh, <laughs> no, what you doing to Jesus? Not Jesus. He ain't gonna never block me. Hey, okay, all right. <laughs> so we um, you you Lil Duval. You see him again. First time was on the bus a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Then how did you get the call for? Oh, uh, I feel like I was there when he first went up on stage. He had this little joke where he had a like plain white T-shirt. Yeah, and he had it folded up. He he had he had uh, he had braids back then. Yeah, yeah. And he had like these uh little Migo shades back before way before Migo. Mm -hmm. And so he get on stage, real bohemian style, look real minimalist. He get up there like, yo, y'all, y'all, anybody here got black business? Makes noise, black business makes noise. Oh, uh, hello, hello, hello. Y'all can clap. Oh, 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 clap. oh, oh I, know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. I'm in, I'm invested in the story. Like, yeah. He like, um, I got my black business too, y'all. Make sure y'all support it. Uh, it be a plain white T-shirt. You know what I'm saying? He'll show the front and the back. He said, make sure y'all, the people out there selling bootlegs, you know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all support mine, you know what I'm saying? I thought that was so hilarious. 
So I go up to him like, man, that was her. Cause he had a prop. And that was to all, that's all what I was about. I was about anything three dimensional. You know, uh, I had a la I had a laugh track. I brought laugh tracks to comedy. Cause I was so fun, scared that my jokes wouldn't work that I would, I burnt the CD and put the laugh track and DJ Ant Love, what's his name? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Aunt DJ Love. Ant Love, shout out Ant Love Uptown. Ant Love was so magical with that motherfucking laugh track. Cause every time I said a joke, he had to laugh. Yeah. Right. So I got the laugh from a uh, Hanging with Mr. Cooper episode with Chris Tucker. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And, and it was this joke that this one coach, the coach had, he was trying to get Mr. Cooper to come in and play. And the way he laughed was so great. I sampled it for a beat. But then when I was making the beat, I said, this would be cool for tonight when I go on stage. And it worked. You know, but I didn't have a joke to follow up on. So I got, got booed regardless. On top of the <laughs> laughing, it was like the first time you got. Standing ovation and booed at the same time. Yeah. The Uptown, but but yeah, that's how I met Duval, you know, at Uptown. And then he asked you to do his project. Well, it was later. So uh, after getting booed so much, uh, we had put out the first skits, VHS. However, uh, Food Stamp got together and got that together. And then once again, I was trying to like direct it without knowing I was a director. And everything I asked this guy to do who was editing it, he was like, well, that's going to be another $100. I said, to put my name on there? Okay, well, okay, cool. Well, we had to wait two more months for his food stamp to save $100 and put my name on it. And, and we would walk two, three miles to the editing session and walk two, three miles back. And food stamp is really like a, a tough guy, but to me, he just kind of let me vent. And so the whole way there and back, I was just, just man, talking shit. And it was like, in hindsight, I was really mean to him. But I was frustrated because it's like, I had all these creative ideas. Everything I'm doing now, if you see the shit I'm doing now, it was still in me back then, but I didn't know how to, you know, articulated. articulated. I didn't know. Yeah, I knew this nigga wasn't doing up. half that shit. Yeah. yeah. You know, it was like, nigga, it's something he not doing. I'm just really, fools. I'm just doing the best he can. We barely got food to eat. We walking to this editing session. You know what I'm saying? And I was just kind of making them feel bad about it. But I was fired up. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, we we did the next one. I took it upon myself to do it myself. And so uh, I was dating some girls in Georgia State, and uh, they made me leave a dorm. You know, because I was staying with them. You know. And so they made me leave their dorm while they wasn't there, right? So they wouldn't get in trouble because they had roommates. So I had to have something to do with myself between, you know, the time they got back to the house and then us going to the comedy club. I had to occupy my time. And they had this uh this library in there with computers in there. Digital aquarium. The digital aquarium. And I snuck in. They thought I was a student. So they right. let me take out and check out cameras and and to the point where they, they wanted me to, to get hired there to teach. I say, hey man, what's your student, what's your student uh, number? We're gonna hire you, bro. Cause you here every day. Uh, I said, hold on, be right back. I left, you know what I'm saying? And I was walking down um, five points. This dude was like, hey man, Nathan looking for you, man. The whole school looking for you, man. <laughs> like what? He said, he said, Nathan said, call him. They see you. Nathan said, call him right now. So I go to a pay phone and he said, man, I almost lost my job, man. I gotta go meet with Julian. And if, if I got a job, man, I see what I can do to help you out, man. But I know, man, that was messed up, man. You could have, I, I just had a baby. He was cussing me out, but at the same time, he was like, he understood, you know, because it really wasn't no, nobody asked me was I a student. It was their fault. They fault. But I had I had made such an impression in the school. Like I was teaching classes. Um, I was I, I built up the audio program. I, I I was bringing in artists in. I was bringing Big Oomp in there. Big Oomp came to the studio. Yeah. D DJ Unk wow. came to the studio. Four Eyes came to the studio. Yes. It was like Slim J came to the studio. Like I had artists. I turned Georgia State into my own personal production company. And I was I was just a nigga off the street, <laughs> mm -hmm. and yep. uh, and then when they realized I had taken, and, and the final straw was Tyler Craig, rest in peace. He 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 had seen something me and Food Stamp was doing, and he hired me. He gave me five hundred dollars to do his comedy special in Charlotte, Carolina. So nice. so uh, so so I took every person in the lab that worked there and booked a, a hotel rooms with an S. Got a you got a got a got a van. Put everybody in the van and took every fucking camera out that motherfucker. Every microphone, every camera, every lens, nigga, every piece of equipment. And we went to Carolina for about two three days. And I didn't realize that like the school still had to function. So when we got back, I didn't have a job. He was like, "Bro, you've outgrown. You've outgrown this place." <laughs> He's like, "Man, I, you're doing what I wanted to do with this stuff." So uh, I know some people at CNN that uh, you know that, that that I'm gonna make a good work. You'll be good, but you gotta get out of here. You just like I had girls in there. Like I was so addicted to editing, I was editing two computers at one time. One was rendering, one was editing, and I had a girl doing my dreads at one time. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I just was the man at Georgia State. Yes, I, was, I was just like 
doing it. Yeah. Like, I, I should have went to college, but didn't I didn't understand what college was. We kind of went to college. We did. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It was just too much nigga shit going on. Yeah. 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 We was in that motherfucker <laughs> every day. I was hey, sleeping. That's crazy. I was sleeping in that motherfucker. I would I would sleep under the table and uh or, or edit till I got tired, sleep under the table and right before they open, leave, go to the bathroom and come right back in and get right back to editing. Hey, good morning. You're right back at it. Yeah, I'm right back at it. Dang. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's so I was crazy. so passionate because I was trying to do the second tape that me and Food Stamp was doing better than the first guy. That was my target. I was just trying to, I couldn't wait till he put this motherfucking in and seeing, yeah, nigga, I just started this shit. And I'm already doing better than you, motherfucker. And it didn't cost me no $100 a letter, nigga. I was fired up. <laughs> so I see how you, you bought like me, you get amped up off like, um, like if somebody don't doubt at you, yes. somebody don't play with yes. you, that's that's me. That's yeah. that makes me want. If you say something about me, I'm about that stay. Oh, she a female. She can't. Oh, oh really? Oh, okay, bet. Yeah. Okay, that's how I get. If yeah. I get, if I don't do good or something like that, that just motivate me just to go pray and be like, oh, I need some more jokes. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. like, and then be ready for whatever. Yeah. Like I like, yeah, I thought yeah. I was the only person like that in the world. Yeah, I want him. That's to how quit. I feed off that. Yeah. They I'll, give me ammo. Yeah. I want him to stop doing it. I want him to quit. I want him to not ever, ever pick the camera up again. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then, is. and then, it, when, once I slay that dragon, I will find a new target. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I will create a target. You know what I'm saying? And then along the way, whoever benefited from it, it really don't even be about the music or the artist. If 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 if, if somebody pissed me off, you gonna get a good video. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If I'm in a good mood, you might not. You know, I might just get a little decent, cool, little junk, junk, you know, jamming away, whatever. But if you really like, you know what I'm saying? So, but it's just all like psychological, you know what I'm saying? You know, like your triggers or whatever their triggers are, you know what I'm saying? So you was you were um you were like the the first person doing um uh, independent DVDs in Atlanta. Wasn't the first, comedians. wasn't the first. I was just busy doing shit and I could do it. I wasn't the first. There were DVDs like Hood Affairs. Who was doing skits? Who was doing oh, skits? Oh, sketches, like... nobody. Yeah. That, we that's... were we were the, whatever's going on <laughs> on Instagram now, when it comes to comedy, the blueprint was laid with Jack, with the interviews. There was no one doing interviews before Jack Thriller at all. That didn't happen. That was the, when you hit, you hit like crack in the 80s, bro. Everybody now owes you a check from, not owe you, but just they should pay homage. You know, I'm their daddy. From 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 the Joe Button, they they were lost in this game. They were just critiques, you know, critiquing work, uh, throwing rocks at the new artists, you know, uh, busting uh, freestyles in, uh, in in the crowd, wishing they could breathe on the mic. Dig, dig, dig. You know what I mean? So you started that, and then with with, with Duval, you know, the the, the, the talking to the it. people, engaging people through, through antics, you know, and through sketches. And then what we did, we had the visual version of that. You know, we would just actually do all the stuff that you see now, all the memes, all that stuff was on skits. You know what I'm saying? The memes, the jokes, the spoofs. It's like the Bible for what the internet ended up being. You know what I'm saying? We just didn't yeah. have the distribution of the internet. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. We distributed so through uh, Fast DVDs. forward to 2003, um, Duval, he, he seen skits too. Right. He skits one. Yeah. Right. And he wants the you to uh, produce his new DVD. Just got a deal with Mercury Entertainment. Right. So he gets a deal. I had I. So everything's kind of moving, and I don't know what's going on. But the, like you said, you got to feed the streets, and I was feeding the streets content. I mean, I remember uh, we would go on a roll with Peter Sin. Peter Sin had just dropped, and they had the um, uh, they had the All Star Game in Atlanta, when right around the time when I was promoting my little skibidi, DVD with skits and spoofs now. So we sold so many DVDs because Fifty Cent was in town. We had the idea, we just start following, uh, that's 50 Cent right there. We start mm -hmm. following 50 Cent from every city he went to. We just went to wherever 50 Cent went. Mm. And we had our poster, and like we was right there, like wherever 50 was. I just was so locked in. I never made that much money. I think I made like $2,000 off DVDs, you know? And we was packaging, and promoting them and, and printing them all and burning them myself. So we would like go somewhere and burn them however we was burning them and then go to Kinko's and my little girlfriend, and food stamp, little girlfriend, all of us just sitting in Kinko's to, you know, until we finish, and then we'll shrink wrap the motherfuckers. That was that was my most like we gotta shrink wrap them. That make the shit official. You know what I'm saying? We, and that's when the DVDs and the hairrest was popular. Everybody on Peachtree used to ride down playing music with the TVs and the hairrest. If I seen a nigga with a TV playing the hairrest, hey man, pop this shit in, and they give me twenty and thirty dollars for it. On dope buggy, whatever man. Hey, you know, even CeeLo bought one. That's right. CeeLo bought one. Mm -hmm. He said, man, in my last little eleven dollar man, I'm going here to support you, black man. You know what I'm saying? But uh, but yeah, that's that boy funny. That boy funny. So we get to that boy funny. We do his. He was like, man, this shit might be some bullshit. 
I'm not gonna put my name on it. He said my name, his name was Lil, Roland Powell at the time. That was his name on Cedric Entertainer. So his name was Roland. Mm -hmm. But he was like, man, this might be some bullshit. So I'm gonna put my name as Lil Duval just in case this shit don't, this shit don't work. You know what I'm saying? So his name is still Lil Duval, so I guess it did work. But he was feeding the streets like a motherfucker with that, with that, with that DVD. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The streets was eating that shit up. And it laid the groundwork for his for his fan, fan base. I feel it laid the groundwork for what's 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 happening now, along with everything else. It's being funny and charismatic and you know what I'm saying, having all the charisma in the world you can have. But uh it definitely contributed to the momentum, you know what I'm saying? And then now you roll into being this this um big music video director, man. It starts off with young Jeezy, rolls on into uh the amigos would you say amigos was the the the, the thing that, that made you pivot and change or would you say jesus uh recession album did um it was probably ice cube ice cube yeah i ripped that west because that was a whole coast okay got you that's a whole coast open up, up when you when you do videos in a region you just the region guy when i did that I think I think Fat Joe came right behind that, and then right. you know, uh, yo God, just every I wasn't regional no more. I was nationwide, mm. so now I'm on the road. Now I'm not even in Atlanta no more. I'm not even doing Atlanta no more. You moved to to uh, L.A. This this I was still in Atlanta. I didn't move to L.A. until after Future. After we broke Future, after I did Future first videos. Mm. Once we did Future, once Future was out of here, uh, he was gone. It was just nothing else for me to do because there was nobody really buzzing. And I think Two Chain was maybe uh, six months later. But Atlanta really wasn't, it was no one else for me to really, you know, work with. Cause everyone else had like super deals. Like it was Lil Wayne or Nicki Minaj, somebody I just couldn't get to, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so uh, through Coach Cato. That's right, from all the way back in the day with Bangladesh. So, but what happened was the first Migos was uh, Travis Porter. See, that was the first one. So I did, a, I, once again, somebody pissed me off. And I did Travis Porter Make It Rain video. The Make It Rain oh, video. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it was hard. Right. Wow. So I did that video. Mm -hmm. And I was so mad, I picked, packed up and I left Atlanta. I just so, I don't know what it was, but I was just so irritated. I was like, you know what, I'm out this motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like I was doing so much and I felt like it wasn't being recognized or acknowledged or it was no momentum behind it. It was just back to square one. So I was so mad, I just hit him in the face one more time with the Make It Rain, said, fuck this shit, I'm out. You know what I'm saying? And so, Coach loved that video. Coach K called me like, man, look, that video. He, we stopped, we talked on the phone. For, we it was already cool. You know, Coach would pop up every, uh, Coach has an eye for talent, right? Coach knows the, 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 um, um, the post of the streets. Yes, yes, for lack of better words, right? Mm -hmm. he, he, he has a, 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 he's clairvoyant, right? He can mm -hmm. see it. Mm -hmm. And so, thank God he was around to see what I was doing. Like, he, he was just kind of like, I didn't know who he was. I knew who he was, but I didn't know what his, I didn't know. I didn't know what, what, the, what the relevance of Coach K was in, in the situation. Mm -hmm. I just knew he was everywhere I was at. If I was shooting a video over here, he was there. If he was over here, he was there. And so, uh, when I did the Make It Rain video, he called me. And uh, he was like, just really like, happy for me. About, just, just thanking me or just being proud of me. Cause he seen from Rocco to the street shit to something artistic. I guess people didn't really know I had that range, you know? So, uh, and that was a conversation we had and it was a really powerful conversation. We stayed on the phone maybe two hours, but that was the groundwork of us working with the Migos. So maybe a year later, he, he said, hey man, you in LA? Me and the boys finna come out there, right? And so it was him, Quavo and Takeoff, just it. And, they, and I met him at Business Beach, and that was the first day we, they first video ever. We and I ain't have a plan. I ain't even hear the song. We were jumping out the gym. That was the first song we ever did, and um, I, uh, I, I, I kind of didn't really. I, I was, I wasn't really into it. I, I, I didn't, I didn't know. And so, they cocky ass take off. Like, you know what I'm saying? He just like, let me know when you ready. <laughs> yeah, like 35 chains. I'm like, what is this? What is this, nigga? And we shooting in the middle of Venice Beach and it's crowded, niggas playing basketball, niggas laughing at him and shit. Take off, don't give a fuck. He don't give a fuck. Let me know when you ready. You ready? All right, let me know. Let me know. <laughs> I'm fucking with the camera. I'm taking my time and shit. I say, roll playback and uh, hit play. Boom, he just takes off. I said, oh shit. I had never heard the song. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh shit. And we just start bouncing and shit. He's like, I'm like, this nigga tight. You know what I mean? And it was so dope, I forgot Quavo was even there. Like Quavo, it was like three hours, Quavo just sitting there, oh, no, you good, you good, that's my nephew, man. You know, y'all good, go ahead, you know. 
everybody got he just really cool he wasn't no hate mm -hmm. so that made me like like both of them because usually when you in a group situation one person is fighting over the you know they so always the like yeah they yeah. trying to like let me get more scene let me get that scene Quavo let me and him just, you know, vibe. We were just doing this, doing it. We were just doing shit. You know, it was like a photo shoot but with, with the video camera. Because it was fun. I'm like, okay, a nigga with talent. You know what I'm saying? And I kind of probably missed the, uh, the the energy of the South a little bit because, you know, uh, LA really ain't got that kind of energy. You know what I'm saying? Out there. So uh, it was just fun, man, working with them from the first take. You know what I'm saying? He just exploded. I was like, oh, we can work with this. And so we went over Soldier Boy house and Sean King's and mama cooked us some food and we shot another video and then we shot another video and then uh, we shot Chinatown. We shot a bunch of videos just just that whole All weekend. Hits. Huh? Shot hits. Yeah, we shot big records. We not yeah. knowing. Yeah. We not knowing. So they go back home, tell P. Now I, I met P, but I didn't know I met P. I've always seen P from working with Gucci and them, but I didn't know I met him. But through coach, you know, he made it a uh, cordial. So after I sent them the videos, they were like, uh, some kind of way I was in Atlanta doing a Dolph video, a Gucci man video. I think I was doing fuck the world with Gucci and future. I was down here doing that. And I swung by the old studio on Metropolitan and people were like, come, 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 come meet P. Coach was like, come meet P. So I came to meet P. And as soon as I walk into the old QC, we went not QC at all, it was, it was just, the studio, I don't know what the name of the studio was, but it was on Metropolitan. As soon as I walk in, P walk in, he gave me all this camera equipment. Here, man, you can have this shit. Hell. He just, he just gave me lenses and sit, like top notch shit. Just mm. as soon as I, I ain't even said hello he said, to him. You belong to us now. No, it wasn't like that. Okay. It wasn't like that. No. It wasn't like that. It okay. was just love. It was just like. But you knew that would do your it was, shit. It like, was like. I'm about to walk off with this. This is. It was just like. Mine? Yeah. He just gave it. He, okay. just, he just gave me like. This, this camera equipment, again. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it was like, then, so while I'm like meeting P and, and, and talking about the video we just shot and watching the videos and shit, everybody bun room, hey man, hey man, uh, check the email, check the email, he shit the song back. So they open the email, shout out Amigo, shout out Zaytoven, Drake jumped on Fazaji while like he sends a verse while we're in there like meeting. Uh, I'm, well, we was already met, but we, when I'm meeting P and Coach, or meeting them at the same time, right. or meeting Co P for the first time. Same time. And uh, they had just, they were opening up the file that Drake had just sent for Versace. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And he like, hey man, you want, hey, hey, uh, you, you, you want, you want to put a treatment to this? Nigga, what do you, does a bear shit in the woods and wipe his ass with a white rabbit? <laughs> <laughs> and, and so Drake, was it, did he get in the video? No, nah, he didn't make it in the video. Okay. But I don't know why, but he did jump on the song. Because you think you think that you because it was just, they was still like relatively new yeah. at the time. Yeah, and he was I, doing him a favor. I, I, it, 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 and because he, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, That's what I, it was for I, sure. Honestly, I feel like I think the best thing in the world is like when you said earlier, if your daddy would have been in your life, you might have you might not have been like as assertive. Yeah, if Drake would have been in that video, maybe things be different. Cause y'all all had a lot to prove, so it made all of y'all stronger. Yeah, yeah. Yep. It's, gotcha. it's, it stands on its own today. That's right. Wow. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes it, that would take away from it. Yeah, yeah. it would have been his it song. Was, it would have been a Drake video. Yeah, it would have been a Drake video. It would have been a Drake song. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, sometimes you can be bigger than yeah. your song. Your yeah. song can be bigger than you. Sometimes, sometimes a comedian joke can be bigger than him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just so you know, true. You see them comedians they got them one jokes. Yeah, be bigger than them. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Like you Chris Tucker, Chris Tucker had like a five minute set. Yeah, like yeah, that, that was it. Mm -hmm. It blew up. Yeah, yeah. So after that, uh, I go back to LA and we we shoot the video. I fly everybody to first. We tried to get Miami. They was the Versace Mansion was closed. People were ready to go. Cause I had already pro proven myself with the, with the with the first 29 videos we had to deal with them. He liked the quality. And then I, I knew intuitively that I had to come with it on this one. This was a, this was a pivotal moment in, in everybody's life. I knew I could feel it. I felt the weight of it. So I um I, I pivot and bring everybody to LA. P was cool with it. And so uh um we, we get a we get a location and we shoot the video. And uh I'm my own producer. So I got everything you see in that video, I had to I had to meet the person that brought it and get them to bring it. Right and negotiate the the fee to get it there. Then I had to get the like I had to do everything in that video. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have a production company. I didn't have a a sidekick. I didn't have a a helper, or a homeboy, or a cousin that didn't know what he was doing. It was fucking up. Just me. 
You know what I'm saying? So everything you see in that video, I had to source it. I had to figure out how to get there, talk to that person to get them there, from the stylist to the blaze of grass to the lion. But that's what you do. That's what I do. That's what your that's yes. what your skill is. He a, he a resource man. Yeah. You kill it. Y'all that's, that for that's, a, yeah. that's a talent, man. That's a, that's yeah. a, I've seen him do that's a talent amount of times, man. It's, it's deeper than a talent. It's a gift. It's, it's yeah. a gift. That's a gift, man. Yeah, but I felt it was like, okay, I had already uh, humanized uh, Quavo because Offset was in jail. So I hadn't met Offset yet, but you know I really believed in uh, Takeoff and, uh, and Quavo. Right. I really believed mm -hmm. in it, and then and, and, um, P and Coach were just different than I have ever worked with executive wise. I had never worked with people who were who are genuinely like pleasant and respectful to my craft. Mm -hmm. Like they're not just the money guys. They were like so many other people that I had worked for in the city. They were actually invested in it. Like uh, right. P had got to the point where he was like right next to me as I'm directing. You know what I'm saying? understood ch camera lenses and changes and stuff. He was invested in it. You know, he's a fan of cinema. He's not just like a, uh, man, you do a figure it out. Like, he knows what's going on. He, uh, he has a he has an insight on it that's, mm. that's peculiar. I can't figure it out, but he knows quality level. He knows like when you see a certain director shoot a certain song, it's by it's by design. It's not, oh, cause he's available. Quality like he's like control. a like a coach, you know, like he yeah. is a coach like coach, you know what I'm saying? So the say of quality control. Yeah. I just 100%. say that quality control. Yeah, keep the quality there. So, you know I stole that from you. So I, oh, after, you did. After, okay. So after the video, you know, I was kinda exhausted, right? So you shoot the video and then I kinda like take a couple of days or whatever. And I'm in line. Diddy had this uh party in LA and I go and I stand in line and I'm in line at this day party and I never go out. And so I go to this day party, I'm in line, and they turn, they put the Versace song on, and the fucking crowd lose their fucking minds. All I hear is, wow. I'm like, what the fuck? Oh shit. I need to go home and edit this motherfucker. I went straight home, edited that motherfucker up, and the rest is history, man, as far as that's concerned. That video you know God was born. No, it, was, yeah. it was. It was. I had started putting it on there because of uh, our, my my affiliation with Gucci Man. I think, you know, Gucci Man. You and Gucci were really cool. We had good rapport. And he. I uh, never asked you that. You you yeah, so uh, cocky but so humble. Yeah, but see, uh, <laughs> uh, um, I think Wiz Khalifa and Gucci Man had a video in L.A. I think Gucci was getting a little trouble, and uh, I think his people called him. I said, "Man, won't you have him come out here, man? Get him out of Atlanta for a while." And he pops up in LA and he's like, we're gonna shoot a video with Wiz, write a treatment to it so we can shoot a couple of days. So I do it and then like I called him and I spent all the money on the video. But when I called him, I was like, hey man, I was acting like Walker. I said, I fucked the money up. He said, what, where you at? He thought I fucked the money up. Uh, <laughs> now I can't read. Ooh. Right, so I'm fucking with him like, hey, I fucked the money up. I'm like, I ain't got no more money. Like, I spent all the money on everything. When you see it, I'm. he hung the phone up Next thing I know, he in the he he there. He looking around like, oh, okay, okay, cool, okay, cool. So he go get his haircut. He 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 super he super excited now because he's seeing all the. If you watch the video, you will see it's a lot no, of people 100%. there. I mean, Vlad TV was there, just there. You know, mm -hmm. DJ Don Cannon. It was just it was just like everybody was there. It was like it was like a party. You know what I'm saying? It was like crazy. You know, so I had everybody there. It was just like you know I couldn't miss. You know, I was I was bringing Atlanta to. LA, you know what I'm saying? And uh, and he had never really had a video where it was just fun. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't about this, it wasn't about that. Everybody was here to have fun. It was girls there, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, and somewhere in the day, uh, they had Trap God, because that was the mixtape it was on. Mm -hmm. And so. Trap God. Uh, right. Got it, okay. So, uh, I put Video God on the Trap God in Jess. And then uh, somebody put it in front of him. He was like, oh, okay, Video God, Trap God. And he took his chain out and put it on, on my neck. He took a chain wow. off. He, he took it back though. You know, oh. They always do that. Yeah, that. But <laughs> I was like, you know what? They did it I, like I'm rolling with this. If he cool with it, then I'm cool with it. So, uh, so I just, I just ran with that shit. Got to stand so. on it. Got to stand man, you, on okay, it. Okay, before, before we wrap this up, give them a rundown of the people that you didn't work with in the videos that you done done that you know they would be surprised to know. Fat Joe. Um, I mean. Uh, I don't know, man. Tell them the City Girl video. City Girl. I, I name my, I'm which name, which, which City Girl video? video? Uh, I need the third one that just put, came out. Oh, that one. Okay. Uh, fuck that nigga. Fuck, fuck that nigga. Okay. Uh, Come on now. Oh, Biggest man. one. Oh, so good. I don't remember, man. I, it's so many of them. I don't know. Just look. You'll see. You know what I mean? City Girls with a 305. Little Baby. 
Oh, uh, that's my dog. That's my dog. Oh, yeah. I was just about to say that's my dog. Just this, saying this it. The first one, I think one of the first early ones. I haven't worked with him in, in a minute, but oh, the, the nigga that's um about to get the death penalty. Y N W Miller. Y N W Miller. Murder on my mind. Murder on my mind. Yeah. 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 It, and it, he it was on his mind. Yeah. It it was was hush. Mind. <laughs> yeah. Did y'all did y'all really shoot that video the way that y'all shot it before all that stuff even happened? Yeah, he had nothing to do with that video. Uh, Melly just just I think he was just out of jail. I never met him once again. I met him on the set. He, I I, had, I probably heard the song when I wrote the treatment, but didn't think of nothing of it. I was down there shooting the city girls, you know, and I was just doing it for a friend as a favor. And uh, um, so a favor saying you did it for free? No, nah, like oh, just in terms right. of when you work with new artists, you don't know what you're gonna get. Yeah. Okay, okay. So like. It's who you know at certain mm-hmm. levels, you know what I'm saying? And uh, the person that introduced us, I knew them. I yeah. think somebody from Worldstar. I mean, Worldstar had a good relationship. Uh, so I did it on the strength of that. And uh, and, I, and I just kind of went into it. Like, I really liked the concept of what he was talking about. But he had nothing to do with the actual visual. All he wanted to do was have a goat in the video. That's as, that's as, as much as input as he wanted. Was I said, what do you want? Make sure I have a goat. Uh, it's okay. Yeah. A that's goat? It. A goat, yeah, yeah exactly. A real a animal? A uh, animal, yeah. Some satanic shit, you know. Yeah. In fact, he told me to, it was him who said, I had it too demonic. You know, I had like a pig. I had a real pig, a, a pig that was dead. Mm. And I had got a pig that you can get a pig. And then I wrote murder on my mind on the pig and had the pig tied into the into the jail cell. That mm. was the opening shot. Mm. Oh yeah, this is an evil motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I went there. I just got into the character. Cause once again, I'm an actor first. Right. So mm. I get into the role as a director as I'm, I become the artist, you know what I'm saying? So that's how I interpret the, the, the music, you know, mm. from an actor's perspective, I break it down like that. Word. Right, right, right. Now, G- G- Gabriel is one of my best friends in the world. This is the first, but it won't be the last time you on yeah. here, man. I really appreciate you. Thank you for having me. And feeling in the gap and, you know, blessing us with your story, bro. Yeah, man. And whatnot. Uh, is there anything you want to say to New Jack Thriller City before we get up out here, my hey, dog? Hey, man, I just appreciate y'all having me. Thank you for missing. Duchess, Erica yeah. Duchess, such a pleasure meeting you. Yeah, you know likewise. what I'm saying? Cash count. Welcome back to the game. Yes, sir. The game needs your energy. Man, you, congratulations on your show. You know, I like your show and I admire your style. But the peso cheap won't be back for a while. <laughs> Word. <laughs> hey, that's Gabriel Hart, y'all. <laughs> hey, check us out, man. Let's take your picture. Yeah, that was dope. Act thriller. City, yeah. oh.